Hello and welcome to 360 Gamer Cast, episode 83 for Tuesday, the 10th of August 2021. I'm your host, Mark Webb, Gamertag, Pierce on a D, Steam ID, Webby, 360G, and joining me on this very fine evening is... Uh, Nicky Wilson, I didn't have time to think up a sarcastic opening line. <laughs> and uh, self-isolation switch. Whee! <laughs> self-isolation switch, uh, did, did you get the COVID, Darren, or did you just get... Or were you just I'm near not, someone that got I, it? I haven't developed any symptoms yet. Oh. But did you uh, test positive or, not, or negative? No, I've, well, so far I've only done like one because it took us a few days to get hold of the, the kit. Yeah. Bit of a thing. Uh, so you obviously you know you wrap the bull rush thing around your tonsils and yeah. then ram out your nose and stuff. Yeah. Proper fun. Loads of dry heaving involved because I got yeah. a really horrendous reflex. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I did that last year. I did, I did, did it when we were doing the drive-through one, and I threw up everywhere in my car. Oh, lovely! Yeah, <laughs> and I didn't have it, so it was a complete waste. <laughs> oh goodness me, goodness me! So yeah, um, on my end, I'm still unpacking boxes. It's uh, it's become a bit of a a chore now. Like li- literally all weekend, all all the, the the wife and I have been doing is unpacking still. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's not great, but, um, yeah, we're getting there slowly. My tiny man cave is coming together. Um, yeah, but I've, I've, I have managed to find some time for gaming this week as well, which is pretty good. So, so I'll get to talk about that very shortly. Um, mm-hmm. and that's all that's been going on in my, in my world, really. The weather's been on very on and off. So, um, you know, I've been trying to get out as much as possible. Been, I find, found a very nice walk near some windmills near my new house, which has been quite nice. Uh. So I've been doing that a few times, and I've been working. I've been back at work, so yeah, just been been very busy, really. Um, yeah. So, but but yeah, I have been gaming. So I thought that um, I would start this week because since we've been doing the new order of things, I haven't actually started. So I just thought it would be a, a nice change of a change of pace if if everyone is happy with that. Yeah, go for it. Cool. <laughs> so uh, my mate, I've got I've had one um one game that I've been mainly playing this week, and I've been absolutely freaking loving it, uh, and that is Final Fantasy One. Pixel oh, right. Remaster, the original Final Fantasy that came out in 1987. I was only three years old when this game came out. Um, <laughs> and yes. they were already on the Final Fantasy when when you were three years old. Yeah, so I the, the reason I'm playing this is because on PC and on mobile, obviously mobile I don't count as a proper gaming platform, but it's on the on mobile if you. Uh, if you want to play it on there. Uh, one thing that people are complaining about the mobile version is you can't use a Bluetooth controller with the game, which is really bizarre. You have to use a touch screen because I was going to say it'd be quite good to play with a Razer Kishi or something. Um, but obviously you can't do that. So I've obviously purchased the game, the Pixel Remasters on Steam. Now, the the the, the Pixel Remasters are actually the original six games, but they they are bringing them out every so often so they brought out the first three games and then the and four five and six are being drip fed out over the next few months so uh but but you so but you can buy them separate or you can get them cheaper by buying them all together in a bundle so that's what i did that was like 50 quid fill for six games so all right so they're almost a tenner each then sort of yeah, well, if you buy them separate, they're like fifteen, sixteen pound a pop. So it's actually worth it to to to, to just to buy the whole bundle. To be honest, um, and some people might think, well, that's quite a steep price to pay for such old games. But I think, well, the amount of hours of entertainment you're going to get for me, it's worth it. I've never played the original five games. I have played six, but never finished it. But now this is going to give me an excuse to actually finish six. Um, and yeah, they've done quite a nice job actually with it because they've they they've redone all six games in this new pick pixel art style. So if you remember the old 
school games of yore, they were all in a four by three, you know, because all our old TV, big fat chunky TVs were squares. Um, so they've mm-hmm. redone all the games that are they're all widescreen. They, they've actually just just remade them all from the ground up in this new art style, which is really really nice. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I did notice though, I did see a comparison video because some of the games they did actually do a re-release on the PS One back back in the day. And I watched a comparison, and I actually think the art style they chose for the PS1 version is actually nicer uh, than what they did for the Pixel Remaster, to to be honest, like on the character art and stuff. But overall, I'm really impressed with the uh, with the overall pixel art style of Final, of Final Fantasy 1. Does it suffer 1. from the typical sort of like pixel smoothing where they try and smooth pixels and it doesn't look kind of right no but because it's like you know like in octopath traveler you know that's kind of a pixel art it's kind of reminds me of that if that makes sense because it's you know it's redone for the modern kind of era the modern systems right so it looks decent um and and the other thing that they've done which i think is absolutely amazing they got new and I'm going to fuck his name up. Nubo Uematsu, the Final Fantasy music man, to redo Uh, all the music for all the games. Oh, that's Uh, good that he's kind of in better health then. Yeah, so... Yeah, so he's... Yeah, so so, so he's redone all the music and, oh my God, it is absolutely amazing. The music on this is just, you know, it's full orchestras. It just goes for it, man. It belts out. And yeah, it's great. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, But it's just really, really odd because, you know, it's the first Final Fantasy game come out in 1987. And it just kind of, you know, it's very old school in the way just you just jump in. So it starts off your... You you choose four characters at the beginning. And there's all the different types, you know, like your thief and your red mage and your black mage and your healer, your white mage and your warrior. So you can choose four, name, and you can name them all. Um, and the story's not, you know, it's not su- su- super in depth to be honest. So you start off and there's these four characters, and they're the heroes of the realm, and they've got to save the realm. They've got these four different coloured crystals: earth, wind, fire, and something else. Ice, I think it is. Um, and um, so it's basically a massive world map and you go in and, and explore the world map and there's all these different towns and villages and dungeons, etc. Like those were the, were the Final Fantasy. Um, you know, and it and it's the random bat, battle system that we're all accustomed to um, with, with the cool music. And, the, you know, all those are redone as well. The only thing I will say is there's a lot of random battles in this. A hell of a lot. Um, but but what I've been reading online though, Darren, I don't know if you'd be interested in this or not, is they've actually uh, uh, some fans have complained who played the original because they've actually made the game easier, um, oh. which I'm which I'm not complaining about at all, <laughs> to be honest. So they've upped the amount of goal of 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 gill you can get, so it's easier to buy your magics and your weapons and stuff, um, and they've actually ramped up the XP slightly as well. So. The way this works in this game is your your different characters. You obviously you use your money to buy your weapons, your armor, and all that bollocks. But you also use it to buy your magic. So it's a little bit like a materia system in a weird way. So you go to these like the white magic shops or the black magic shops, and you can buy like your fire and your ice and, and blizzard magics. All the different levels for obviously like your black mage, and then and then mm. they cost money. That's so obviously the better ones are more money. And then for your white major cures and your Karagas and all that stuff, again, you can buy them for different amounts of money. But you don't unlock them all straight away. So different towns, obviously, like the later on you get in the game, they they have like the higher level magics, but obviously they cost more money. So yeah, so that's quite cool. Um, I've actually gotten really far into the game. I'm I'm about twelve hours in now. Um, I have unlocked quite a lot. I'm actually think I'm quite near the end of the game. So um, I've unlocked. So near the beginning of the game, you unlock a ship so you can sail around the world. Um, and then, and, and but I've now unlocked the airship so I can just fly around wherever I want. And as you know, in most Final Fantasies, when you get the airship, you know you're getting towards the end of the game, right? So, yeah, you're like two thirds yeah. through, sort of thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> So so basically, the gist of it is you've got to save the kingdom, right? And you've got these four crystals. 
and you have to go and defeat these specific enemies, you know, like your behemoths and all that stuff, you know, all those, all those recurring characters that come up throughout the series, and you have to, like, it kind of, like, charges your crystals, so I've only got one more of them left to do. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, because it's, because I love old-school JRPGs anyway, and I love that the story isn't overly convoluted. It's very simple, you know, like the games of yore as well. Like I love the combat system, the turn base, you know, it's all that typical Final Fantasy, you know. You have your healer, you have your magic dude, and you got your tank or whatever, you know, right? Um But one thing I have noticed about this is the story is very similar to a lot of aspects of Final Fantasy fourteen. So, uh, so you've got you've got characters that do turn up in fourteen, like Matoya, who is the witch. She is yeah. a, a very early character who you meet in Final Fantasy one, who you help out, and she has her cave, and it's exactly like the cave in Final Fantasy fourteen. You know, but obviously it's pixel up form. music as well. Yeah, it does. And I was like, yeah. oh my goodness! And because when she made an appearance in Heaven's Ward, obviously a lot of people were there. Because obviously, as you know, they use a lot of inspiration from some of the older games, and they yeah. kind of got an interesting way of explaining how it all goes because of like the the worlds, the amount of worlds there are in yeah the fourteen universe to a degree, and yeah. It's it's just raid tie-ins and all sorts, yeah. Like loads of little uh, thing backs. Like it's it's got quite a massive, rich history of stuff that you can dip into. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I mean, it does, and like the over and the overarching story of the four heroes, and they come in and they've got the crystals. That it kind of reminds me a little bit of the main quest line the original quest line in 14 as well in a weird way like you know with the with the heroes and the world ending and all that stuff so there's i can say i can certainly see a lot of inspiration for 14 from from this game from what i've played so far and and what but but, but what's really weird about this game right is uh, because i picked up the pixel remasters thinking yeah i'll dip in you know whatever but i got it's really weird like it's I got so sucked into Final Fantasy 1. It was just unbelievable because I was thinking, oh, it's such an old game. I don't think I'll really super get into it. I just It was just more of um, an interest. Like, I just wanted to see what it was like, right? How how they'd done with the remasters, blah, blah, blah. Because if you look at the original NES version, it, it looks so fucking basic, you know, as NES games do. So they've done such a good job of... Oh yeah, I've, I'm oh. watching a video of it while you've been talking about it, and I have done a decent job. Like, yeah. it's a crime that this isn't on the Switch. It is. That, it is that would really, really thrive on that platform. I hundred percent agree. I mean, I, I, I do find it an odd decision that they've only released it on PC and mobile. Um, but Final Fantasy. Now, I think it's a test of water. Yeah. This Square Enix, if they can just pull it, they'll pull it. Yeah, but but, but Square have come out and said. Um, that the that PC is one of their best selling platforms now. Um, so obviously they they want to keep the PC gamers happy. Obviously mobile is is super popular all around the world, right? But I think I I certainly think that this collection would do very well on console, especially the Switch. Uh, you know this, it, 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 I mean, because it would work perfect. It would work perfect on handheld, but obviously I'm playing it on PC on my big monitor, and it just looks gorgeous. So it, it works on both, right, handheld or TV. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 really pleased that this collection has come out. Um, so I'm actually going to go through and play all all six of the original games now, and then I can officially start completed every single Final Fantasy game ever made. So um, <laughs> the pixel water effects great. The the water effects because it's like because there's like a shimmering light on it. it it's yeah, um, it's just pixels simulating like the the actual water flowing and that it's yeah. really good but, but but they've also like redone all the maps as well so like your mini map in the corner it's very nice and it's easy to mark to, to 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 make things out as well which is quite good um yeah so yeah fine if you've got a pc <laughs> does it still go when you cut into a new area like most uh, 2d over the top games like that no do? no no oh. i've not noticed that no um <laughs> No, but, but but one change that they did make on the music is after a battle, the music still carries on from where it was. It doesn't start again. Um, 
because that can be very annoying, can't it? Just listen to the same beginning of a song all out like the. I must the admit, yeah, there was a certain game. I think it was like Morrowind back in the day, and you'd just be getting to a really good part in like one of your favourite tracks that, that takes a few yeah. minutes to get to. Yeah. And then you get attacked. It's like dun 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 dun. dun. You're like you fucking arsehole. <laughs> oh no, it's so annoying. <laughs> You're gonna really <laughs> die for that. Like, yeah, and that's and you that come back out good. and yeah, and then you come out and it, it's, the music's like reset itself, or it's past that bit, and you're like, eh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I just want to say I wholeheartedly recommend the Pixel remasters. I mean, because I was very dubious to be honest when when this was announced, I was thinking, oh, I'm not on the fucking cash cow, but they've done a very good job. They've put a lot of effort into this. Uh, well, the first one, anyway, I'm sure. It's the same with the others. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be trying to go through these at a nice steady pace. Uh, hey, Webby, did you yeah. hear they um, took the the mobile port they put to Steam off of Steam now? Yes, yeah, so I actually have that that, that port of, of Final Fantasy VI. So if you already own it, you can still re-download it, but they've taken it off sale now, which is a great thing that they've done because obviously... The Pixel Remaster is going to be vastly superior. So, yeah, and hopefully I'll actually finish it this time. Because it is an epic mm-hmm. game. Yeah, so so that's been the main game I've been playing this week. And it's been an epic journey. So, just sticking on the Final Fantasy theme at the moment. I did restart Final Fantasy VII Remake again. Uh, but on the PS5? Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so you get doors, doors with textures now. Uh, uh, at least, <laughs> yeah, one of the things pretty... that was a letdown on that. The <laughs> kind of indoors in a couple of the locations. Yeah, so to be honest, I mean, it's been a long time since I played it on on the PlayStation Four. Um, so my my memory's a bit grainy on on the graphics situation on it. To be honest, because I start I started up, I started playing, and I was like. Thinking to myself, it doesn't actually look any different to me. So, I mean, and, and so, so I went on, so, so I went online onto YouTube and watched some comparisons. And even on the comparisons, I was struggling to see any difference because, to be honest, on the PS4 Pro, it looked amazing anyway. To be honest, um, mm. but the main reason I've started playing this again is because I've purchased the Ufi DLC now. I could just go straight into it and play the Yuffie DLC straight out, but I actually really want to play through the whole game again because it's been over a year. And just um, give yourself a different perspective on it, see if you still feel the same. And yeah, yeah, like yeah, it. yeah, that as well. But also, um, my PS4 save um, didn't upload to the cloud, so I've got no save file on there. So um, I just want to re redo it again. Just to get the trophies and stuff as well, just 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 for a bit of fun, and you know, Final Final Fantasy VII being my favourite game of all time, I re I completed the original Final Fantasy VII again, you know, a few months back, as as listeners on the podcast will will remember if they listen to that episode. Um, so I, you know, I really want to redo re the remake again, and you know, I pumped a couple of hours into that this week, and you know, I'm I'm really. I'm really enjoying it again to be honest. I love the combat system because it's because it's so different to turn based because it's, it's it feels quite action heavy, but you get the option to to pause it and do your you know and select your magics and all and, and all that as well anyway. It's a nice mishmash to be honest. Um you know, and I love the voice acting on that and the character just the <clears> graphics <throat> on the characters and how they've made the characters feel so alive and vibrant and in remake. It's it's just such a showcase for PlayStation and the and 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 Final Fantasy in 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 general. It really does feel like a love letter at times to to the original game, especially the the original characters of Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse. Uh, absolutely mm. fantastic. So yeah, I'm really glad to be playing this again. Um, yeah, and, Abby, did and, you sell your yeah. PS4? Yes, I did. Yes, say because yeah. you that you can't get your save back because that's what uh, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, you have to like, um, install and update the original on the PS4, and then in-game up- upload your game mm-hmm. save to like the Square Enix cloud, 
and then uh, download it to the PS5. I can't be. I'd rather just just play the game again, mate. To be honest, and just, well, just yeah, enjoy yeah. it. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but this is a problem. See, see, this is an issue with PlayStation because you know if it was Xbox, it would just automatically have been uploaded to the cloud, and it'd be like, oh, download. Do you want to sync your game data? Job done. Fucking five seconds. Job done. PlayStation. They just make everything bloody hard work, don't they? You know, it's crazy. Like. Everything is difficult on a PlayStation. I'm not. I don't want to bash it because I actually I've been playing it a lot the last week and I've completed two games I'm going to talk about in a minute. But they do make things hard work on the PS5. To be honest, you know, like the whole SSD fucking bullshit and the cloud safe things just really pisses me off. But yeah, I really want to play the game again anyway, so it's not really a massive deal for me personally. Um, so. So yeah, I'm just gonna rip through it and enjoy uh, enjoy playing that for again, and then get to the Yuffie DLC and complete that. Uh. Yeah, so I've been playing that. So back, so on to the uh, so talking about PlayStation Five stuff, I did complete Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart this week. Ah, um, oh, you've finished that already. Yeah, so. Really enjoyed it. Absolutely fantastic game, to be honest. Um, were you on last week, Darren, or not? I don't, don't think you were. No. Yeah. No, no, no. So, yeah, so so I finished this, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, the graphics were awesome. The story was, was, was really, really fun. I did, I mean, people say that the game's short, but I think, I, I do feel like it went on a little bit too long, to be honest, because... Because cause you get to a certain part on the game, you think, oh, yeah, if, uh, this this is the end. And then, oh, no, it's not. It has a whole other big section. <laughs> yeah. I think only once or twice have I actually played a game and sort of been to the point of, like, J- just end. Please, <laughs> just end. Like, <laughs> Yeah. But but um no I mean it it was really like Ratchet and Clank was really well done like the all the characters were fantastic it was all about the dimensions right so there's another dimension version of Ratchet uh, and another dimension version of Clank and they're both done very very well um, because you play as the other character as well the story melts together really well but it's done in like um in like a kids cartoon type way like a kids cartoon type baddies and all that sort of stuff and it's got a lot of comedy elements in it as well, so it always was yeah. kind of that yeah. type of uh, franchise, to be honest. Yeah. So it's just sticking to what it does best. Yeah, hundred percent. No, and I really enjoyed that because my little boy, uh, he's three years old, and he really enjoyed what watching me play it as well. So who wouldn't if you're so a kid? It's it's, it's yeah. one of them games that should appeal to the younger generation as well as obviously the people that grew up with the franchise and. Yeah, people that like those kind of games as well. It's it's another one of those ones where will it do as well as it deserves to do? I don't know, but again, it's another nice sort of really well made game. It is. It is really well made, and 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 it ties in with the Dual Shock controller really well as well. You know that that feedback on this game is fan dabby dozy. So yeah, really enjoyed Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I, I wouldn't. The thing is, though, I would say if you want to get it, I would wait for a sale because I don't think it's worth 70 quid. I really don't. Um, but it is a good game. It is a solid game, but not a £70 game. Uh, was it a £70 game? Yes. I'm sure like, it will be if you if you buy it sort of like from shops or whatever. I'm sure you can get it under 70 But But yeah, it, it yeah. was really good. It was really, really good. So another game I completed this week, which I only paid twenty five quid for. So uh, you know, I was really happy with that. That's uh, Spider Man Miles Morales. Oh, yeah. So finished that this week. Really enjoyed it. Actually, uh, really well done. Wasn't too long, which is great. Uh, I don't really like super duper uber long games. I think it must have taken me about, I don't know, 12 to 15 hours, maybe. I didn't do much of the side stuff because I couldn't be arsed. I just wanted to enjoy the story. Um, and, and, and yeah, I really liked it. So, again, like first thing I want to say is the, the, the um, gameplay. It's just the same as the original Spider-Man, right, if you played that. 
Uh, but obviously with Miles Morales, he's got his he's, he's got his own move set, which is really really cool. Um, some baddies from Spider Man do make an appearance in this. I'm not I'm not going to mention spoilers or anything though. Um, but the thing that really that that really just pulled me through the game was just the story because it's actually done in in, in just in a really cool way, you know, where it makes kind of sense that um he's he's in the spider-man universe if that makes sense because there's 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 two spider-men in in the city now but um the original uh well well peter parker he goes on holiday so he leaves miles on his own <laughs> and all this wacky stuff happens and all this stuff happens and he has to deal with it himself uh but, but he deals with a lot of family issues and friends issues and it's actually it's all really well done. I really, really enjoyed the story of this game. It was it was it, it was a lot of fun to to experience, to be honest. Um but yeah, the overall world, you know, same as the original Spider Man. Um far too many collectibles that I just couldn't be fucked to deal with. Um but if you just want to plow through the campaign, it is a really good campaign and for the price I paid for it, I I'm, I'm you know, I was more than happy with that to be honest i've got off ebay to say for 25 quid for the ps5 version so nice i, 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 I thought that was a quite quite a good deal to be honest so yeah so yeah i mean i've been uh, hammering the ps5 this week as you can tell so um i very briefly jumped back into the beta well the open beta for new world uh which is the amazon MMO that has now been delayed. <laughs> Not by much, is no, it? No, it's been delayed oh, by really? one month. So it's going to come out at the end of this month. It's now coming out at the end of September, uh, which isn't the end of the world, really. It's an it, it's a month delay, right? You know, and and and, and that's because they they just want wanted to polish off a few things that that had been uncovered from the play test, which is fair enough, right? I, I would rather wait a month. To have a game that's a little bit more polished and to have a game that's rushed out and has issues right so so they are listening to the player base um but yeah i mean i've only played it for about three or four hours to be honest um because i just wanted to get a little taster for it because i didn't want to put too much time into it because every, obviously everything gets wiped and then because you're, you're starting again anyway so there really isn't much point on pouring hours and hours and hours into the game like some people have done um, but but overall, like gra graphically, it looks nice. The gameplay loop is quite interesting. So, is it you know di different to other MMOs? The the fighting, the combat is quite action heavy. So you actually have to move around to dodge attacks, and you have your move sets. But you you know you're you know it's, it feels like more actiony than a normal MMO, if that makes sense. But it feels very actiony in the combat, but it feels very crafty in some aspects as well, because you've got an hunt crafty and hunter gathery, because you need to go and because you've got options to go and gather all your plants and chop down trees and kill animals and skin them for meat and fur and all that stuff as well. So, you know, it's all like it's all the classes that you would imagine, say in Final Fantasy XIV or WoW, like all just all rolled into one. You don't have to change class to do any of that stuff, you just do it. So you know it, it's quite cool. Um, you know I've I'm, I've I've um I've pre-ordered the main games. So I'm going to give it a bosh when it comes out next month. Um, but it's going to take me a lot to it's going to take a lot to pull me away from Final Fantasy fourteen to be honest. Especially now it's become very popular, which I will talk about very very shortly. Yeah, so I've only played that a little bit. So there's that. Um, I've been playing a little bit more of a game on PC that I've been to, I think I mentioned it last week. So, Splitgate. So, oh uh, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, this is a first-person shooter. I've been playing on PC, but it is it is available on console and it is cross-play as well. Um, and it feels very much like Halo crossed with Portal. So it has all the crazy levels of Halo and the cool weapons that are very Halo-like. Um, but with portal, you have a portal gun, so you can pull yourself around as well, which is quite cool. And 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 the mechanics actually work really, really well. It's all just arcade fun. Uh, so if you're used to Halo kind of gunplay mechan mechanics, you're going to feel right at home with Splitgate. Um, you know this this game has apparently been out for a few years. 
and I've only just discovered Has it. it. Yeah, on I know PC, it's it has, on, Yeah, I know everyone was banging on about it on uh, this week on social media. I see a few people talk chatting. Yeah, I think it's been in you know uh, in early access. I think you know they're finally having their full release or whatever. But um, you know, it's actually a lot of fun. You know, you, you know, you jump on with a few friends or whatever, like in the old Halo days, and you can have a blast. I mean, I've just been jumping in on my own. I have noticed a few people in Discord have been playing it as well, which I haven't managed to uh, jump on with them. But uh, you know, it's been it's been good fun, man. Just 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 playing this game. So I just thought I'd mention it because I think it would be quite quite a good game to jump on with the community at some point. So there's that. Um, another game I've been playing is the Back for Blood Beta. This. Ah. Yeah, man. So, so this is actually going to be cross-play. I don't know if the beta actually has the cross-play enabled because I've only played with PC friends a few times, um, and it's 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 improved since the alpha that I played. So when I played the alpha, it was very way overly difficult, and you know it was very you know because because it was early, just a bit juttery and stuff like that, but. It seems to be a lot smoother now. The only thing I did have, I, I did have some disconnection issues a few times. I don't know if the server's again a bit overloaded in this in this beta because I got disconnected. I say twice, which was very frustrating. Um, but there's, but, but I did try a couple of modes on this. So obviously I tried the the normal main game mode, you know, which is just left for dead. You know, I can't I can't describe it any other way. But when you start off the game, you're in like this hub world and you get sent and you've got to do missions for this hub world and it feels more like like a progression system. So you need to do like these little challenges to do to upgrade and get stuff and do missions for this main dude in this main kind of hub zone, right? <clears throat> and then um so so then you got these levels and you go through them and it's like Left 4 Dead where part way through you have another safe room and you restock and all that bollocks and then you cover and then you carry on, right? Um, but there's but there's the other mode which again was in Left 4 Dead where it's like the humans versus the monsters. So you've got two teams of hum of, of, of people. So one team plays as humans and one plays as the monsters. And it's basically just a time limit. So whoever uh can survive the longest as a humans wins. So you have a couple of rounds. Obviously one one time you play as monsters, one play time you play as humans. Um, you know, and then you got to just to survive as long as you can and and it's actually quite fun but um it, it's no you know I, I i i prefer the campaign stuff of the main game to be honest but you know it's a good little side thing you can do if you fancy it but yeah i i i, I think this game's gonna be a, gonna be really really good uh for the community when it comes out i mean obviously it's gonna be on game pass for the for the xbox and pc users which is great um Obviously on PlayStation you've got to buy it, but again it's cross play, so it doesn't matter what platform you you play the game on, you can always play with your friends, which is which is always good. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the full game on this. Day one I'm gonna be on it, playing it with, with the community. I'm very impressed with what I've played so far in the beta, so so yeah. It's very, very good. Any yes, questions? Good news. No, no. Did you notice many differences from the original beta that when you played it? Or did it seem more refined? Or it, yeah, so it just seemed like they 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 tweaked the difficulty. So it's not. I mean, it's still hard, but not as hard because it was just stupidly difficult last time. You just get killed all the time. So they've tweaked Gosh, that. The people getting demolished literally just straight out of the safe house. Yeah, much, yeah. Quite regularly. Um, there there seems to be a lot more variety of weapons available. There's a lot of weapons, so 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 that's pretty cool. Um, and apart from that, obviously that new hub world that that wasn't in the alpha either. You literally just in the alpha you got chucked straight into the game. So 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 that's a big difference as well. Because in that hub world you can like there's an area where you can test all the different weapons in like a shooting range, so you can see you know what what suits you best or whatever as well, which is quite cool. Um, so so yeah, I mean it, it it seems a lot of fun to be honest. I've I've really enjoyed what what played a bit this weekend. So. Nice. Yeah, man, it's all good. Um, what else did I play? Okay, 
Obviously, I've played Sea of Thieves. I'm not going to go into that too much. I'm just saying I'll be playing that with the missus and Ruski. We've had some fun on that. Um, people were telling me to check out The Ascent on Game Pass. Oh, nice. My, my, my first impressions of The Ascent was uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> I was like, what are people on about? This game's just boring. But I, I, I wanted to give it more of a chance, to be honest. So I, uh, I I I gave it a couple of days and I checked it out again. So my main, excuse me, the main complaints I had initially were, obviously I'm playing on PC. PC was having some issues, um, but they patched it now. So it runs a lot smoother. Um, oh, was it the card issue, or was it no? I think, no, it was game. just very. Um, the frame rate was all over the place, and you would really notice it, like jumping around the the you know the the game. So 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 that, so that was very frustrating. But also, it's one thing I am still a little bit annoyed about is the Steam version has has ray tracing and the DLSS, whereas the Game Pass version doesn't. Even though on the Game Pass version it says that I have ray tracing on, it's not on. It's just an option that's just there but not activated, which is really really odd. But just 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 putting that aside, uh, I think it's okay. I mean, I'm still not massively into it. I put a few hours into it. You know, did that first kind of area and then got out onto the main world. And the cyberpunk aesthetic is is really well done. But this is one of those games where I feel would be better playing in co-op with friends and i know it is a co-op game um but i've literally just only played it on my own and these sort of games i don't really like playing on my own um so to be honest i've got a little bit bored just running around it's like a twin stick shooter right you just shoot in the enemies and and progressing and I get quite bored of those games quite easily on my own. So if anyone's up for some co-op, I, th- I think it's cross-play. I'm not 100% sure. It should be between PC and Xbox. I'd love to find out if it is. If if, if anyone is up for that, we can uh, do some co-op. Because as I say, single player or this, meh, I'm not that, that keen on it. I have heard some people say that the net code for co-op isn't the greatest as well. So again, I want to test it out. So... That's all I have to say on it, really. Um, it looks it... good, anyway. It was one of those games that kind of piqued your interest when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You saw beat... the early yeah. videos, and then you hear a game comes out, and you're like, "Oh, I have a look at that," and you're like, "Oh, yeah. it looks all right." Yeah, but 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 this is a problem, right? And I and I don't want to downplay Game Pass at all because I do think it's a really good bargain, but. The, the 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 quality of the games hasn't been the greatest, to be honest. I mean, obviously we've got Flight Sim and Sea of Thieves on there, which is great, and a few RPGs that I really dig, which is great. But you know, you you look the at Ascent the Ascent is an indie game, though you can't yeah, particularly. It is an indie game. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. But then, like the medium <clears throat> was again was touted as this big Game Pass game, but again was a meh. You know, and I, and I and I just look at the exclusives that I've played on the PS5 um, since PS5's come out, and they have, and most of them have blown me away. And I haven't had that blow me away moment on the on the Series X Game Pass games at all yet. Really, apart from Flight Sim, actually, yeah, the Flight Sim is the only one that's blown me away. But that's you know, it's a simulator, right? And I've and I've been playing that for over a year. Um, so, I'm, mm. uh, so I'm really looking forward to Xbox actually showing off more games, hopefully by the end of the year, Halo, Forza, and hopefully some other surprises. So, yeah, we'll see where that goes. Um, the last game I've been playing, I'm sorry to bore you all to death, Final Fantasy fourteen. Now, the reason that I <laughs> wanted to mention Final Fantasy fourteen is it's got a massive influx of new players in the last month oh yeah it's it's rammed all the time it's it, rammed every day you've got a queue to get in well i logged much. on today and i was 400th and something in the queue to join to get on the server yeah i've had a couple of times this week as well where there's so much server congestion going on when you go to select your character and everything it's just it's got question marks and yeah, unable to today. Yeah. display mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that's what i've had today 
But the reason I wanted to mention the game is, is what's quite interesting. There's a couple of people in our Discord community that have decided to pick up the game. Um, so, so that's really good to see. So I want to say a big welcome to Wes and D-Twin to Final Fantasy fourteen. D-Twin has actually I'm joined... I'm sure he's our... played it before. Yeah, but he kind of fell off it quick, so he's back on it. He's joined our server, and he's joined our free company as well, which is awesome. Uh, Wes can oh, join... I think he might have been in it. No, I had to invite him. I definitely invited Is him. Has Wes got day. server issues, has he? So Wes couldn't join our server because it was full, so he's joined another server in our region, so he could guest well on the on the server. Um, right, yes, yes. So... <laughs> So that's cool. So it's been quite interesting because I've had to set up a Final Fantasy bloody chat room on the Discord because there were so many questions coming at us on the PlayStation chat and everyone was just talking about it, getting quite excited. Um, so that's actually quite quite good to see. So it's actually made me get get on the game quite a bit this week. So I, I have not... how how mad it's been to to be honest. As someone who's been basically playing this since launch, yeah, this is. This is basically launch style madness, but it's felt more often because there's so many people in the starting areas, not in the mm. latter areas, but in mm-hmm. the starting areas. Mm-hmm. So these are like new people starting out, and it makes all those earlier areas feel as populated as they were all those years ago when the, the servers went up. But what's crazy is this is the complete dead period. This is usually when like subs drop off because you're yeah. still three or four months away from an expansion and everyone's cleared all of the current content and patches mm-hmm. up to now. This is when the player count drops off, but it's spiked massively. Yeah, and 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 this is what I'm finding quite strange, right? Because I kind of dropped off the game a few months ago because I've done all the main story content. There's still some actual bits I've been doing this week, uh, a couple of the raids I hadn't actually done. Uh, so I'm actually just clearing up all the extra content that I couldn't be asked to do, but I'm actually going to do it now. Um, but I, I'm finding it really, I'm I, I'm really loving it again because it's just that feeling you get when you're in your starting zone. Because I always go back there whenever I log on. Mm. Uh, it's just like wow, it's so busy. This is so cool. And then obviously the extra chat that's been going on in the Discord with 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 Wes and D Twin. Like Wes is really trying to get into it, and D Twin's obviously really into it. Just those conversations happening and the fact that the game's been really busy and they've upped the weekly cap on the um two on the times to nine hundred now. Yeah, it's a well, nine hundred, yeah. Which is great, so I can gear up a lot quicker. Because I haven't actually got all the max gear yet, so I'm kind of concentrating on uh the raids that I haven't done and getting the, the, the best gear. It's it's kind of just got me really into it again. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it and I'm really happy to see some community members getting into it as well, and obviously to get uh, more people into our free company. Um, yeah, it, it it's just madness. It's absolute madness, and it's just it, it's just how an MMO should be, to be honest. Because because I because I was saying to the guys, I saw I I remember, you know, in the down periods queuing up for over an hour or more just to get in to do my daily dungeon run, and I'm and I'm getting in within a minute or two at the moment. It's it's absolutely insane. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. It's absolutely great thing to see the game so healthy. Um, and well, and a lot of it. I'm is sorry, a lot, a lot <laughs> of it is down to like certain streamers and that picking it up. And it is hundred percent. There's also a lot of like. It's not just obviously that Asman Gold guy that's started playing it now. I think there's quite a few prominent sort of like WoW streamers that are just dropped WoW for the moment, and they're just yeah. into Final Fantasy. And WoW's just had an expansion <laughs> launch. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, within the well, last year or so. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff going on with Activision Blizzard at the moment as well, which is turning a lot of people off from playing their their games anyway with the with all the allegations and stuff as well. Um, so so Activision and Blizzard aren't, aren't in gamers' good books really anyway, and I think World of Warcraft has been getting a bit stale as well, I don't think their latest patch, mm. their latest um, well, expansions uh, have been that even great as well. With, with people, such, such some people saying that, like, oh, the the game's like just the same thing. It's just getting stale now, or whatever. And it's like that game's been out for ages, yeah. ages. Yeah. Like 
that will happen to every game over time. It yeah. doesn't matter how good it is, it'll just get to a point. And how, how long's WoW been going? 14 years or something, is oh, it? Oh, something insane. Or more than that. I think it's more. I mean, is it like, <clears throat> when did it come out? 2004, was it? It's got to be. Because I remember playing it when it came out. Have a look it up. I'm sure it's, it's yeah, sure it was. It was 2004. Yeah. Bloody hell, I've got a good memory there. November that's... 23rd, 2004. Yeah. So, so yeah. 16 years. That's a long time. Way that's a hell of a long time. So, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, so it's had good long legs, and they, yeah. they, they've certainly made their money off that game. We think Final Fantasy fourteen has been out for eight years now, so... You know, that's a long time as well. The, yeah. the, it, I mean, you've got to think, like, the, the fact that you can, like, was it free troll up to Heaven's Ward, even though some of the stuff you're denied access to would make it a bit easier, like retainers and things like that, if you're playing, like, the free-to-play version. But that's still a huge chunk of game to play through, like... Yeah. For free, and and it is one of those games where, like, after twenty thirty hours, you kind of know if you're going to like it or not. Yeah, yeah, definitely, hundred percent. So yeah, I mean, that's that's all I wanted to say, really. That that sort of games I've played, um, taking up forty minutes of what I've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like Crazy. oh, it's only two of us. I thought. <clears throat> It's yeah. usually your thing. Usually, I haven't played much, but here's all the games. Later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lots of Final Fantasy. So yeah, that's me done. Everybody, it's been emotional. Um, mm. Nikki, we've been playing, my man. I think since the last time I was on, I just started Yakuza Zero. Yeah, and I finished that now, and oh, I okay. thor- thoroughly enjoyed that game. Like, really enjoyed <laughs> it. I mean. I just haven't played games like that for years. I mean, I was like games. I can't think of other games that, have, that are like that. I mean, I remember like, the bouncer on PS2, and we had like Fight and Force and stuff like that back on like PS1 sort of days. But them sort of games, they don't seem to come out anymore. I think other than Yakuza, I think that's about it. But that's that's actually a really good game. The story's fantastic. I mean, the graphics. I mean, I don't think we really need have games with better graphics than that really I just Certain think if games you get... stay stylized like and they're fine as they are to a degree you can obviously make little improvements here and there but... oh yeah like the um, load times could be improved like when every time you have a fight there's a like everything goes blue and sort of um, the games cr- and for a second you think oh the game's crashed oh no it's not and then it loads up but other than that you know I mean, it's got so many different fighting styles and let's say you play as two different characters in that I as um what's the uh majima as well as yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, majima, he is yeah, yeah, yeah. he's an absolute nutter that bloke and he just i don't know if he just basically throughout that game just turns mental <laughs> yeah, it's understandable. I think he gets tortured about six or seven times throughout that game, and you know, he's still. I think he's still a good guy, but it's hard saying because we're playing as the good guy, but they're all Yakuza going around killing people. <laughs> I mean, but the fighting style, like they're all different fighting styles. I mean, Majima's probably got slightly better fighting styles because I mean he has his normal one which you start with, you know, kick and punching and that. And he just gets another one where he just gets a baseball bat out and just starts bashing the shit out of people, which is awesome. And then there's another one where he just watches these people having like a break dance fight in the street. <laughs> yeah. He's looking at it, he's like, Oh, that looks good. And then all of a sudden you learn this like break dancing style of um fighting. So he's just spinning around the floor kicking everyone. Basically like um Eddie Goro from Tekken 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Battle era style. <laughs> yeah, and things like that. But I think, I, uh, so when I finished that, I think that's about 35 hours <laughs> that was to play through that. And I thought, oh, that was actually quite a long game. And I looked at the completion percentage, and I think that said I completed 17% of the game. Yeah, there's a lot of side stuff in the Yakuza games, you know. Yeah, I looked on that. They said, like, to 
on um, how long to beat.com and like to get a platinum trophy you're looking at easily 200 hours to That's get all insane, that insane isn't it yeah there's so much yeah, extra I mean, content in those games um, yeah and that's just the thing is though, a lot of people aren't even going to get to see it because mm-hmm. you know I mean who has yeah, time to spend it. Who, who gets time to spend 200 hours looking at everything but I oh, know yeah but, but 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 the choice is there right as Darren says oh yeah know, yeah that's it's, and that's what I like about them because you can just plow through the main story if you want, or you can just divert yourself and do all the crazy mini games you want. You know what I mean? And even play old arcade games in the arcades. You know, so 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 that's what's really good about them, to be honest. And 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 that's what I like about the Yakuza's games. You know, it's my favorite game. It's one of my favorite game series now. Um, it's it's that mixture of a serious main story, crazy ass side quests with just the most insane batshit crazy stuff you'll ever see you know and all the mini games and all the side stuff that you can do you can just wander off you know it's just that choice to do all that stuff if it's there and and i like to have that choice you know and 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 that's and that's and that's a great thing about them yeah i mean like one of the crazy side stories which is when um Iryu, he was teaching a woman to be like her um dominatrix Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> and, and this is weird because I saw a picture online as well, and which when I noticed it when I, when I was on um, streaming it, so all right, let's go somewhere and I'll teach you how to like talk dirty and down to you know, all her <laughs> whatever. And you go to like a children's play park and they're sitting there on the swings, sort of looking over and listening. I was like, why is she saying that? And she's standing in there in full leather gear and whip. And, <laughs> and I'm like, at this game, what is this game? I thought it was a fighting game. It's obviously just quite normal in Japan. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, things are more fun in Japan. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. So I actually went out and bought um, Judgment, the first one. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I'm going no, to judgment. hopefully play through that because the second one's out soon, I think. It is, yeah. A couple yep. of months. Yep. So yeah, I'll hopefully try to get through that before that comes out. Because that, that one's got... Um, English voice acting as well. Well, that one has, so I'll play through that on English because obviously playing through on English is much better than Japanese. Even though no, I disagree. I have, yeah, I, 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 everyone who I know who loves Yakuza loves the Japanese voice acting, so I suppose yeah. I must, I must be wrong. You are wrong. I think it's I just think the so, fact yeah. that a, a lot <laughs> of the, um, a lot of it is very over the top. Yes. Or it. it's the it's the whole like if you look at the way that the sort of like most Yakuza or street punks and that uh portrayed in their stuff, it's all the and all that over the top sort of yeah. stuff that they like throw the, in. Um, cut scenes and like the main story from the main characters, that seems to be voice acted really well and even though you can't other than reading the text, you don't understand what they're saying other than reading it. You still feel it the same way you would if it was English. Yeah. Like the the basic stuff, like walking around town, NPCs, they're just like, blah, 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 and I'm just like zoning out completely. Because maybe, you know, they they do the best voice acting with the, well, they must do the, the better voice acting with the main characters. Yeah, well, they're, well, they're all... Um... Hmm. Well, all the voice actors for the Yakuza games are all actually famous actors in Japanese cinema and stuff, so... Um, <laughs> Much to yeah. Judgment's testament recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember seeing some of the characters because they're actually like based off um, real actors. I'm like, they are? I swear yeah. I saw him in a Jackie Chan film, that dude. And I looked up and <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's good. So then, yeah, so I finished that and then went on to a complete, completely different type of game. Bayonetta 2 on the Switch. Oh, nice. How is it? Uh, I've completely zoned out of that, to be honest. I mean, I, I completed it on... I mean, it's not that quick. I think you could go for it in about 10 hours or so. I mean, it's just more Bayonetta, the same as the first one. I mean, it looks nice. You know, the combat's really fluid, which you'd get from a platinum game. But it's just weird. So, I mean, I played the first Bayonetta, and that just seems like... It's part of a like long line of sequels of games, but there right. there isn't. That they're talking characters are popping up, and I'm like, who the hell is this guy? As, as, as if we're supposed to know. I mean, I don't know if um did some kind of manga or TV show 
Japan that went along with this or before it's based off something else? I didn't particularly follow the story of the original one that tightly myself. It's kind of all over the place. It's, it is sort of done in a fact that you, you, you kind of like, even with like the early Devil May Cry games, as though you know this character already, sort of a thing, and you're yeah, just but, jumping but into the mm. And it's weird. I mean, then uh, this character, this little kid that was throwing um, cards about, and I'm like, yeah, don't care about you. And then there was another Bayonetta woman turned up, but she was full leather gimp mask Bayonetta. And uh, Bayonet kept calling her mummy, so I'm like, this is weird. Uh, and um and there was another different character she had but she was wearing all red latex instead of black, so I don't know what that means. I mean she she got kidnapped and I had to save her from some guy who looks like Sephiroth but not. I can't I can't remember his name, so when I was streaming I just kept kept calling him fake Sephiroth right the whole game. Then uh, he like went all like <laughs> One winged angel, but with two wings, and sort of rose up and mutated, like exactly the same as what Sephiroth did. As an eight, but only had but had two wings. So, and then I can't remember the end. And to be honest, that was just it was mad. But I mean, that that's the sort of game that is. I don't know if you're supposed to pay much attention to the story; you're supposed to enjoy it. I don't know. I think it's all about the gameplay in those games, right? That's what I mean. Just enjoy the gameplay. I mean, yeah, there's like yeah. all moves you can unlock and I think that's made for like multiple playthroughs. I mean I unlock to move there um simply you just hold the one of the triggers down or bumpers down or whatever it's called on the switch and um you just like similar you know the um break dancer just spins around with the guns on her angle yeah. then she like sort of stops and looks right at the camera pose and then just like winks at you and stuff like that. Yeah, and then also someone came into the chat and said, do I want to play um, multiplayer with that? I was like, this game's got multiplayer. Yeah. I'm like, oh. yeah, I'm like, all right, what, what kind of multiplayer? And that's just basically, I think it's two player. That's what else we had. And basically just, it was hard to actually find him. He just said, just click um, quick match and it will match us up together because like he accepted uh, my friend's request or friend's code or whatever that was. But that was a bit weird because obviously there's no party chat or anything like that on Nintendo online. And then basically we just um there was like six rounds, it was kind of like horde mode, six rounds or all, all different bosses. I think it's like like a few people, then loads of people, then a mini boss and stuff like that. So there's actually a lot of um gameplay there for the money, but I mean that's still only on Wii U and Switch. I can't believe that's never actually got ported to the other consoles. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe oh, yeah they, they, they basically paid for it, didn't they? Like, it was yeah, but Nintendo games. paid for it, the, Yeah, there was controversy around it, because obviously the original, as we know, came out on 360 and PS3 and then PC. Right. Um, and then everyone was shocked when the sequel was announced just for Switch, but apparently, according to the devs, they were like, well, no one else was going to finance it, and Nintendo stepped in, and it's like, without them, we probably wouldn't have made it. We get that a lot with games. a long time to make the third game as well, because we've been waiting now, what, about three or four years since the announcement? Maybe longer? I think so. I mean, I forgot they even announced it when the bloke said, are you going to play three? I was like, I I forgot they announced it, because I think they announced it I said about three or four years ago, and I don't think we've heard anything since. But I think that's how Platinum do things. I mean, that's I mean, didn't they like cancel Scalebound as well? I think that was Platinum. Yeah, they have been working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Like even certain games, you'll find out that oh, they worked on the the combat side of the game and such. I mean, they were they doing like stuff, uh, what... sorry, the Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which is still hopefully fingers crossed coming out at some point. But they did like a lot of the, the combat for that, and they're doing that other game, aren't they, that's kind of like a games as a service. We slagged off a little bit that was shown off at E3. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, so after Mickey? that, when I finished that, because I still had the Switch open, I jumped on with my mate Liquid, and we um played some uh, Mario Kart multiplayer as well. Oh, nice, Which, yeah. I, mean, that's a, but I never actually knew on that. There's actually like... um. Arena multiplayer, not just the racing. Oh, yeah. 
which I never know, which is weird because we had it was like um eight of us, four on four in um Discord chat, just like you know swearing at each other and showing each other because that's how you're supposed to do it in party chat and stuff like that, aren't you? And I wasn't really sure what was going on because I I never played that one before. I was just driving around on my car. And I was like, "What? Well, I've got this big flower on the top of my car." And I was just like driving into people, and the flower was just like eating them and putting them oh, in the like chomp. a oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, chompy yeah. thing. Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, I mean, I never knew that was in that." So I don't really like the multiplayer on Mario Kart that much. The racing really? because yeah. no, that's just there's too much rubber band and and you just don't get an advantage if you're actually a good player and like um. You know the people further down you know, the track, they get all the better up. I I have they... heard a lot of people basically say Mario Kart is communism. The game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you if you're doing really well, they'll it, it, do everything in its path to bring you back on an even keel. <laughs> I mean, there's that um, meme going around, which is so true. That's happened to me where someone's like fifty yards from the end, winning first. Then you just get hit by blue shell, blue shell, red shell, green yeah. shell, and then ev- and everything, you know, electrocution, and then he shrinks, and he goes from first to, like, 12th. <laughs> and he can see the thing, and that is that happens so much. And, oh, yeah, all the time, yeah. It's, it's like, just, all, in first place, you're lucky if you... Oh, I got a banana again, did I? Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. Got a banana, and that's <laughs> useless, and, and then the people at the back are getting all... And, 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 I just don't see how... You know, as a racing game, that's like they said, oh no, you don't want to be first after the first lap because you're first after the first lap, you've got no chance of winning because <laughs> the game. Won't so everyone's saying, oh, what you want to be is about fifth or fourth coming on to the third. I'm like, well, that's not racing, is it? It's more confusing than Formula One, man. It, it kind of reminds me of. Um... Little like old arcade style races in a way, in the fact that you'll find no matter how good you were at most of them, if they were multi lap race games, you could only get to a certain position like after the first lap, and you could only get to a certain position in the second, and you were meant to like overtake and win in the kind of like the final lap. Uh, yeah, yeah. In those certain games, is because it keeps obviously the the tension. It's only like recently they've actually made racing games a bit more I wouldn't sort of say a bit more realistic or whatever but they've removed that kind of little false limitation of like you feeling like you're gaining yeah, I got on. that in um, the Forza Horizon games in a way like you're chasing a boat or a plane no matter how well or bad you do in that you know there's always like a photo finish with like a quarter oh, of yeah, a second oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, things like oh, that hanging out you know, I don't really like that sort of thing. You know, I enjoy, I enjoy the single player, but, I mean, that reminds me, I mean, can you remember you used to play, um, uh, one was really bad for it, like the older Gran Turismo's on PS1, and oh, yeah, so if yeah. you used to watch the replays, you could, like, watch at a certain angle, and you see the car the second, all of a sudden, he's got nitrous on, and he's just absolutely flying and catching you up. I'm like, is he going like that? He's going so fast, he's breaking the game. But I mean, it is what it is. That that's how they that's how they roll. And it's I, I can't really complain that a game you know where you're throwing you know, um shells and bananas and stuff like that that is not realistic, can I? I suppose. Oh, <laughs> then I do complain. That's what we always do. And the last you know, game, the Nintendo games are meant to kind of either cause horrendous arguments or just have, give everyone a good laugh. Yeah, like that kind of group. Because obviously, the arguments, the, the worst game for arguments, as far as I'm concerned, is the Mario Party games. Oh, I've not really played them. People stealing stars and stuff off you, and that uh, can get fucking nasty. Vicious <laughs> argument. Yeah, I've heard about like people that could be in like last place, like about a minute to go, and somehow end up winning. I've yeah. seen people storm out of rooms and proper kick off and stuff <laughs> in that game back in the day. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and the last game I went on to, which I finished um, last night. I played for was Catherine Full Body Edition on PS4. Oh, nice! I love the original game. Is it is it, is it much different? Well, I never played the original. 
So, I mean, oh, I've got a digital okay. because I think they gave it away or got it cheap with games of gold or something like that. I always got around, I thought, I'll get that. And then I saw it cheap on PS4. Oh, about, I think it was about 15 quid. So I thought, oh, I'll get this one. But, I mean, obviously this one, I mean, there's three Catherines in this game as opposed to two in the original. Right. Oh, okay. It's kind of weird because how much she's in this, especially for the first um, three quarters of the game, I was thinking, well, she's not in the original. That The first, you know, the original game must be really short because she was, like, really heavily involved in this yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy. I mean, this is more of a story. You you do the little puzzle game where you pull the blocks out and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, yeah. that's simple enough. And I mean, to be honest, I just played that on easy mode because mm-hmm. I just didn't want to. I don't. I don't because obviously I stream these games, so I don't like playing games on really hard and getting frustrated. Yeah, and, like, no, I understand, mate. Yeah, oh, some people many... love watching that shit. Oh yeah, some people. That's why watching a lot people of, flip out. Um, Dark Souls and stuff like that, but that's basically the whole point of the game is this you know you do the puzzle bit then you get your five ten minutes of story then you do more puzzles i just didn't want to get stuck on a puzzle bit for like an hour you know because that's not entertainment just watching me ripping my hair out i mean it might be for some people but it's not entertaining <laughs> yeah. for me yeah i mean there's i mean i don't know if i want to spoil that because i don't know how old that game is. I mean, the it's full about body. ten years old now. Yeah, I, think. I remember playing on the three hundred and sixty. Absolutely yeah. thought, loved it on the three hundred and sixty. There was there was a bit. In it. I mean, with your permission, I'll spoil a bit of it. I mean, there's like thirteen endings in this game compared to um eight in the original. Only. So, do you want me to spoil a bit in it, Webby? Do you care? I don't Spoiling give a shit, mate. I've already completed it. God knows how many right. years ago. Well, this is the new character, so it's not really... Oh, uh, you know... yeah, well, whatever, man. All right, well, I mean, there's another Catherine with a Q. She's turned up, and she's got amnesia. And right. For reasons we don't know. I think you find out later, which is more of a spoiler. And But they call her Rin rather than... Catherine, because right. I mean you've already got two Catherines. It's hard enough keeping up with two of them, to be honest. And basically, she moves in next door, and you've got to look after her because she's lost her memory. Right. And then there's a big bang and an explosion come from her room. So the main character, um, Vincent, runs in there, and she's basically passed out on the floor in a towel. Right. So he goes there and like tries to wake her up. So he like shakes her on the shoulder. So like, get up, Rin. And she rolls over completely naked, and he goes like, "What?" Then yeah. she stands up. Like, she, I mean, you don't actually see anything in this game because there's always something. Yeah, you know, Austin Powers blocking it, so you yeah, can't yeah, quite yeah. see this bit and that. And then she stands up with his with um her crotch in his face. I well, say her crotch in his face, and then he goes, "You're a guy." What? Yeah, and I'm like. The fuck? I was like, "What the fuck?" And I, I've never, you know, seen anything like that in the game. And I'm like, "Oh, well, that was just a shot That's... for <laughs> a shot's sake." And I'm like, "I was just saying on the stream. Well, do I call her a uh, he now? Because Catherine, you know, that Catherine, she was sending like sexy pictures throughout the game. Oh, I'm like, well, man. she says, "Yeah, I'm a, I'm a guy." I'm like, "But why do you dress like a girl if you're a guy?" And that just opened up all that can of worms on the stream. And I'm like. I don't know. Fuck, it's just too confusing. <laughs> right. And then she disappeared for the rest of the game. She just ran off scared. And I'm like, okay, you've ran out of your room completely naked. You just ran off. I'm like, all right. And I never saw her again. Bizarre. That was weird. Oh, well. So, oh, well, never mind. So, she, <laughs> so basically, there's a Catherine or Rin that is a girl or a man running around naked with breasts and a penis. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I enjoyed that. I mean, like I said, there was thirteen endings. I don't know. I got the ending where I ended up with nobody, so that was fun. I just I, someone said, "Oh, are you going to go through all the endings again?" But that's like you have to pick certain questions right, and oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's that. just that's just stupid. So I just watched them on YouTube, which I think it was about. There's about half an hour video just flicked through them, so I just mm. watched the ending on. That's just the same. Like you end up with one of the Catherines, you get married, or 
whatever. And the other one, you can get married with um, the, the girl, man, Catherine as well. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's still is. is what it is. But a few things I did like in this web, and I think you would like this if you ever played that again and saw it cheap. Because obviously this is done by the same people who did Persona. Yeah, 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 Atlas, yeah. There's a few, like, Easter eggs in there. Like, there's the jukebox in the bar, and you can go up to it and play, like, all Persona 3, 4, and 5 music. Oh, that's cool. Which is cool. And then on the um, on the bar, they've got, like, Morgana and Teddy plush toys on the bar. Oh, that's cool. Which you can see. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that was really cool. You know, because games should do that more often, you know, be aware of, like, the other games, not just in the series, but, you know... If you saw things from Devil May Cry and Resident Evil or Tomb Raider stuff in Final Fantasy because they're like Square Enix and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, they should do. I think they should do things like that a lot it's more. That's, that's, that's totally just a nice touch that. for the fans of the company. Yeah, yeah. You should really get some. There's, they, they use the soft toy thing a lot in games, don't they? They do. Oh, yeah. they to games, be an yeah. Easter egg in quite a few games. Yeah, like you find a plushie or a soft toy of a character from another franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, that, and then, I think the other thing I played is um, the original Resident Evil 2 on Dreamcast. I played through that again, but, I mean, I've talked about that before. That's one of my favourite games, so I just played through that again on the Dreamcast. So other than that, that's me done. Cool beans. Oh. Right, should we get into the news then? I'll just skip me then, mate. Just... Oh, sorry. Oh, just... For some reason, I thought you were sick. <laughs> for some reason, I thought you'd already gone. I don't know why. I'm really tired, mate. I do apologise. I'm usually last. No, that's <laughs> fine. I haven't got a great deal to talk about anyway to obviously bore everyone shitless. Final Fantasy, obviously mentioned that a bit earlier on. <laughs> um, Valhalla, I've been doing like the weird festival they've added in that. Oh, okay. So there's a free festival going on for I think it's about another ten days or so, probably so probably about seven from when most people hear this, if they haven't played it already. Um there's rewards to earn, uh one of which is the one handed swords. Which okay. is a thing that you didn't actually have in, in the game at all. But they're giving you like a little taste of it now before they're being like adding extra versions into the DLC that's coming out this week, I think. The Siege of Paris DLC. Oh, yeah, that's going to be... Yeah, yeah, they fixed some things, fucked up others, as per usual. Um, Yeah, there was a community challenge that was bugged for everyone, so they ended up having to remove it, um, which was like a unique weapon or something you could claim, and no one could claim it. Even though it was counting everyone's contribution for it, oh. but yeah, people have had save issues and the usual sort of stuff. It is a an annoying and painful process to obviously be one of the devs working on that game because they'll they'll fix something and bugger something else up. Hmm. It's just unfortunate with that title at the moment. But yeah, the new DLC is coming on. Uh, like I said this week. Nice. So that, that could be interesting. I'll be obviously checking it out, or yeah, I've, I've got the season pass anyway, so I'll get round to it eventually. Oh, awesome! Uh, yeah, I'm looking looking forward to hearing you talk about the Paris DLC because I think that's going to be quite a big expansion, isn't it? So, mm. I've still got a lot of stuff to do and other things. I'm constantly getting pulled about with certain games, although some of the other games recently might have pushed me back to something else. Sometimes if I play a game for too long, I'll get a bit pissed off with it, and then I'll switch to something else for a while. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, so Scarlet Nexus, I'm still ploughing through that. I think oh, I'm yeah, near, so getting on with that now. Roughly near the end of it. Oh, really? Um, I, I'm still point? enjoying it. The story's more enjoyable as you get to know more of it. It does kind of get better, and it's kind of an interesting idea. Um, that they've got going on with the the story and the game to a degree. Mm-hmm. I don't know how silly it's going to get with like the whole strings aspect of it all, but we shall find out soon. Okay. But yeah, the, the combat's still fun and everything like that. But oh, I did like part of the game where I was like really enjoying myself, and then it was like forced chase sequence. Oh god, I fucking hate those. <laughs> in in, a, in an action RPG, mate. Yeah, that's a bit odd. Oh, not, uh, instant fail. Like if you fall, it's it, you, that like you have to restart, and when you restart, you're outside the area 
with the dialogue. So you've got to skip through all the dialogue again to get back to that point again to do the thing. And I just gave up after a couple of attempts. I just thought, no, not impressed with that shit. So like, they could, it doesn't apparently go on much longer, mm. like that actual sort of aspect. But if it doesn't, why did it even need to be there in the first place? Yeah. Because it's just a run to a cutscene of you escaping. So oh, why sad. make you do it? It doesn't add anything. It's why annoying. Um, still enjoying the enough. game though. Like, like I said, the character interactions and going out on the different sort of like because it's um, like a visual novel as well. Bit of like visual novel because there's a lot of talking in it and sort of static screens and that of you conversing with your companions a la sort of like the old Tales games you used to when you're yeah. in the world map kind of a thing but yeah I like the way that whatever you're wearing and have equipped like you can actually see on your characters on the loading screens and on in the actual various cutscenes of the game as well that's good yeah that's good so yeah hopefully I'll get it done soon um, and then I can switch over to Kasane's side because I'm playing as the other chap cool because there's uh, two, two stories characters. that run parallel and then they kind of meet and you'll have different stuff happen in each campaign to a certain point. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Um, but the main one, I suppose, I have been playing and sinking quite a lot of time into is Samurai Warriors 5. Oh, okay. What well, system's that on the PlayStation? Uh, yeah, I picked it up on the PlayStation anyway. Uh, but it's available on, I think, every platform. Oh, okay. I believe, which is which is a bonus because I think uh, Samurai Warriors Four, I believe, was only available on PlayStation for a while. Then it ended up on PC. Right. But I just took that as the fact that Samurai Warriors Three was exclusive to the Wii. Right. Which is kind of like I remember at the time I was like the worst one because <laughs> <laughs> I thought I couldn't even really enjoy it because obviously by that point I had the three sixty and everything and I kind yeah. of like there's a certain point when you can't go back to like Scott picture games on your four mm K -hmm. or HD telly it's just like uh... yeah I know what you mean so yeah good? anyway. Yeah. I, I've talked about it before. Yeah. Because uh, we had the demo that came out a few weeks back. I think it's still available. I believe it It allows you to play through parts of the campaign. Um, basically, this is all about um, the story of Nobunaga and Mitsuhide. Um, and they've completely and utterly focused on their stories for this entire game. It does split off at parts, but you'll basically play through a ton of stages is Nobunaga and then when you complete chapters you'll unlock Mitsuhide's path of the same sort of stories but obviously he's off in history doing different things at different times but okay. it gives a far better explanation into sort of what went on because usually in those games they skip for a lot of stuff they take a lot of liberties as well so there's yeah. characters behind certain cutscenes where you read their bio and it's like they don't even know how they died or at what year they died, but they decided to use it there for emotional effect. Yeah. Okay. But having great fun with it, the combat's typical warrior style, just pounding your way for a ton of enemies with various different weapons at your disposal. It's they are the sleekest to play of all of the Warriors games, I believe, just because of the fact of the dash attacks. Because obviously you used to have the normal attacks into power moves, and now you've got dash attacks into power moves oh, and right. other sort of stuff. You've got skill trees as well that you can put points into. Because every battle you play through, you're getting constant XP and earning bits oh, it's and not, so you've got a decent progression system there then yeah so that it, like it's yeah, always so. a lot to keep up with considering those games usually have like massive rosters yeah so that i suppose the only changes i can really notice in this one is characters have a lot of preferred weapon type mm -hmm. which you then level up while you're playing with them as well so their proficiency goes up which does earn you extra rewards as well nice 
but it also means they can equip higher tier weapons because you might get a weapon that's like C rank and your character's proficiency is only an E or a D or whatever, so you can't equip it. Right. Unless you raise their ranks up. You you can do that artificially in various other systems like dojos and item shops and stuff like that. Okay. But yeah, the, that sounds uh, good, man. It's very arcade yeah. fun by 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 the looks mm. of things. Sort of yeah, with a with a decent story and much more in depth look at the the characters of in it. It actually starts referring to and by some of their normal names, like obviously is one of the main characters in it is like No or No Hime or something. We've known that character as in the majority of the other games, but in this game they reference her as Kicho. Okay. Which is obviously another name for her. Uh, and it's like that for a few of the other sort of characters as well. Oh. It's nice that they've kind of tried to jazz it up because I did think the, the Samurai Warriors 4 and 4, like 4 2. I still haven't played Spirit of Sonata even though I own it. I just didn't have the hard drive space to test it out. But I did really enjoy those last two games anyway. But they have thinned the character roster down in this one from that because if you're looking at it now, you'll probably notice that it's got sort of like a cell shaded look to it in comparison to the older ones. So it's got more of a sort of cartoony overlay. A lot of the moves go into sort of like the old school sort of like artistic paintings and drawings of that time period. Okay, that sounds good, man. That sounds a lot mm. of fun. One annoying thing, though, is there's a, a kind of... To upgrade your dojo and your barracks and your stables and all of that lot for your various different upgradables in the game, you pretty much have to play something called... Um, is it My Castle Mode or something like that? Where you go into separate little battles and you learn materials from those battles, but you obviously keep you can keep levelling your characters up and they form bonds and unlock extra okay. scenes sort of between two characters interacting. Okay. Uh, and you have to play those this mode to uh, get the materials to do that. And some of the battles kind of have annoying requirements at times. They're random. Oh, you can be in certain annoying. yeah. So you can be in certain fights, and you go and like levering away, and it's all you got to get your score up to get a higher rank in to obviously get the best rewards. Uh, and obviously using certain moves and keeping your combo going. I think the highest combo in this is like something like twenty five thousand hits. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of dudes. <laughs> like you can prop a power up. There, 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 there has been certain levels I have played where I've started hitting the first dude. And I've kept the combo going all the way to the end of the level. Wow, that's insane. That's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, the higher the number goes, you get a little brief period in between, like trying to get another hit in before oh, it vanishes yeah. and oh, drops the combo, cool. that, that kind of thing, yeah. Okay. But because of the randomness, you'll sometimes have it where it's like it will give you a mission, and obviously completing the missions gives you a lot of the bonus points that you right. need to get the better things on the stage, and it'll be like, right, we want you to kill 100 enemies with a Musu attack, which is basically your circle special, like your big cloud-clearing move. Right. And you're like, but there's no enemies about. Awesome. <laughs> and it's got like a minute time limit on it, and oh, then you'll switch to your other character, because yeah. you can sometimes on a lot of levels switch between two characters. Right, oh, that's cool. And this game does actually allow, like, couch co-op split screen. Oh, that's cool. As well, like, these games mm. have always usually been pretty good for that. Uh, and you oh, can nice. have a lot of fun, because some of them are a bit of a bugger, as most Warriors fans will know. You'll sometimes have a mission in the bottom left-hand corner, and then you'll have a timed mission appear straight after that up the top right. And you kind of need a mate up there to intercept and get that shit done straight away because a character might be trying to escape, right. which would fail an objective. Uh, but yeah, it's really well polished. It runs probably the smoothest I've seen a Warriors game run. Like the amount of chaos going on screen and it doesn't seem to just like drop frames. That's good. It just keeps yeah, going good. nice and smooth. Yeah. And there's like sometimes so many enemies on the screen that you'll still get like a little bit of popping where like yeah. a unit of like, 50 enemies will just suddenly sort of like appear around you where an enemy's spawned in on that location. Mm. Wow. But yeah, if you like your hack and slash and those kind of games, it's, it's great. There's a demo. Check it out. Cool, man. 
Yeah, I think Dan was kind of interested in it. I think he'll probably might. Yeah, it's definitely it a Dan type game, isn't it? Yeah, because he yeah. got into the. He did seem to get into those sort of series a fair bit, like with the um, Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Type of a thing, and this is kind of like taking it to the next thing, and maybe he'll even like the fact that some of the stages have like timed aspects and score attacks and combo stuff on them. Yeah, that's cool. The sort of do. But yeah, you can also equip any character with any weapon as long as like you can level it up with them so they can use it well. But obviously they'll have extra moves and extra attacks with their preferred weapon. Oh, okay. Because certain characters get their own unique ultimate skills and stuff. Nice. That sounds good, So man. yeah, I think that's pretty much me done that I can think of for what I've mainly been sort of playing this week. On and oh, off. Man. That's awesome. Mm. Awesome good times. Good arcadey fun by the sounds of it. Mm. Nice. Right then. Must uh, pick up and play. Yeah, so sometimes that's what you need, right? You know, just something you don't need to, to think. Just Yeah, because each stage on um on Samurai Warriors it usually takes between ten to fifteen minutes to finish. So it's, yeah. it's not long. You can do interim saves if you need to as well in the middle of the combat. Yeah. That's as good. well. So it is literally pick it up, do a quick mission, switch it off again. Kind of thing, if you want. Cool. So I've got a couple of bits of news then about Activision Blizzard this week. So uh, and more. Uh, yeah. Well done so. There. The Blizzard president, J. Allen Brack, is stepping down. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> begrudgingly stepping down. Yeah, he's begrudgingly stepping down. <laughs> yeah, so um, he was at Xbox before he uh, went to Activision Blizzard, apparently, which is quite interesting. Um, Who was so that? The, the guy, uh, J. Allen Brack. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, he's he's been named in the lawsuit. Uh, he's been accused of failing to deal with Gross internal reports of sexual harassment. Uh, yeah. Negligence, being a yeah. dickhead and turning his head. Yeah, so there's that. But you'd even think, like, like after a lot of these complaints start coming in of just basically, like, right, we need to pull some people in and start asking them some questions here, like... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and off the back of that as well, the um, shareholders of Activision Blizzard have uh, filed a class action lawsuit uh, <laughs> alleging that Activision Blizzard failed to disclose the severity of the problems it's been accused of in, in a recent lawsuit, in, 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 in the other lawsuit. Eh, too brute, eh? Like, yeah. That's just like... <laughs> That's why it's always great having shareholders at your company. Not only do they sort of dictate and kind of make you produce what they want, uh, they're also the first people to also stab you in the back. Yeah. So, yeah, they've got two lawsuits now. (laughs) So, (laughs) fun times for them, I suppose. Fun times (laughs) for lawsuits in general, isn't it, recently, in films and uh, gaming. Um, a little bit of rumours. This isn't pro- proper news, but there's some, been some leaked images of the new Xbox streaming device leaked online, apparently. So it's just a little white box, and it has a HDMI port, a USB-C power port, and an Ethernet port, and one USB port on the front as well. So... It's literally just a little white box, but I just thought that'd be quite interesting to show people if it's true because they they um Microsoft were talking about a streaming stick at, at one point anyway, so uh, yeah, I just thought that'd be quite interesting. So yeah, let's see if that happens. Okay, uh and there's a little bit of a weird piece of news that popped up this week as well. PlayStation Plus. Um, this this is it raising is the, first... the roof again? Am I what? I no, said, so is it raising the roof again? As in, like pushing the prices up slightly? No. Well, this is the first time since um, PlayStation Plus started 
that the number of subscribers has actually dropped in the last quarter. They've lost 1.3 million subscribers in the last quarter. It's uh, quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, that uh, does seem strange, unless yeah. a lot of those people are kind of... If they're a PS4 player and they haven't got hold of a PS5 yet, are they really getting games worthy of having PS Plus? Mm. That's an interesting question. If you look at it, it that way. Yeah, I don't know, mate. I don't know. PlayStation is a lot more single-player games, though, isn't it? That's, uh, other than COD and FIFA, which will die off until the new one come out. Yeah, but it is quite, quite a lot of subscribers to lose, though, isn't it? Mm, I mean, you think they've given away, like, PlayStation... What do you call it? What was that Destruction Derby kind of game? Rip Fest. Mm, sort of, it was Wreckfest meets like people running around, jumping into cars. Oh, that shitty game, Destruction All Stars, is that what it's called? Oh, that's it, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. So they've had that and Odd World and certain other things that have obviously been the PS4. I haven't really looked at the PS4 stuff, but I think a lot of it is kind of going into the um, latter bits of the uh, sort of last gen. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was an odd piece of news, really, but yeah, but, but there we go. Um, and my other piece of news, we we did talk about it. So, New World, the Amazon MMO, has been delayed from the 31st of August to now the 28th of September. That was the game that was just, uh, having effects on certain graphics cards, wasn't it? That was yeah, the, the 3090s, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is really That's odd. That's apparently been fixed, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's not many people that have the thirty nineties anyway because they're so super expensive, like fifteen hundred quid. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was an odd, odd issue. Yeah, that... I mean, there might even be room for it because, like back in the day, there was a lot of MMOs flapping around. Now there's sort of two main ones. And a couple of others, there is a bit of room for another one to come in and grow. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, man. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, like, because some have died of death, some are like kind of just sitting on a healthy user base. I mean, there isn't many MMOs that run on a on a monthly subscription. I think Final Fantasy and WoW are the only ones. Uh, this new world is literally just buy it, and that's it. Off you so. go. Yeah. So why can't I? You know, something's going on with my uh, my uh, streaming software. It's kind of frozen on me. Chip, is it frozen? You're in a really stupid face. Yeah, I'm hoping it unfreeze. Can't um, see any of the questions. I'm gonna just have to load it up on the old. Uh... Oh, Hogarth said hello. Hello, Hogarth. Hope hope you're doing well, mate. Howdy. Howdy diddly. Okay, should we go on to questions then? Yeah, I thought we already had, actually. Or was that the news? That was the news. <laughs> uh, I must admit, I didn't keep up with a lot of it this week. Oh, I did hear, apparently, there's growing steam behind a resurgence to get uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 re-released. Oh, okay. Apparently, it was, like, delisted about sort of six years ago or something, and it's, like, oh. almost impossible to... You can't... I don't even think you can re-download it on PlayStation if you had it. Oh, that sucks ass. I could try to win that on um, Beancast, but that goes for like 80, 90 quid every time. <laughs> Just fucking pirate it, mate. I've tried it. plays like crap. Yeah, uh, fair enough. I like the show anything. I'll wait until I buy it, and then I'll bring it out for like three quid. It, was, it is one of the most beloved sort of like 2D fighting games by far. I just had like one of the best character rosters. Well, I think that was one of the last ones before they just started like ripping all the characters out and selling them back to his DLC. Yeah, I mean, as far as I can remember, the original, like when you first got Marvel vs. Capcom 2 back in the day, you only had half the roster. I think, I think the there's like 60 characters in this yeah, one. The like 60 was... characters. Like a full fighting game as it was, and then you sort of doubled it as you played through the game. 
Oh. Well, I mean, so that was the original drip feed, when yeah. you think about it. Yeah, the original no, drip feed back in the day came from fighting games, unlocking characters and stuff. Tekken, oh. I think, was one of the first, wasn't it? I think so. Oh, Disney, oh, Marvel. It's like, yeah, good luck getting anything out of Mickey. <laughs> well, if there's cash to be made. I mean, it's just there. All they need is to flip the switch to basically get it made active again. But there's obviously yeah, some no, sort of that... licensing issue or a net code issue with it. I don't know. I don't think it's that. It's just money. It's like who it's what slice of the pie. And then people say, well, I made that on this console, so I still get my money and he wants his money. And they all have to agree. It's just politics and money. Indeed, yeah. The main reason that the uh, character roster changed so drastically in the latest one, which was infinite i think it was was because disney wanted to feature more on the characters from the actual film franchises and uh, stuff which is why and because they didn't own the x-men stuff they ditched all of the x-men characters out of the game and they were some of the best characters in the uh, roster it's a shame it's a shame right i'm gonna get in the questions mate because i've got a few that i want to answer um okay What's my tag asks thoughts on the Halo Infinite news this week. Anyone try the beta? I didn't try the beta. Did did any? Oh, I'm shocked. I thought you would have tried that. Was it this week or last week? Um, I don't. I think I tried to get into it. I don't think I. I, mean, I never had an email saying I, I I was in it. So I think you have to pre-order it to get into it, right? No. That's usually the That's, case these days. I think you had to pre-order it to get it, and if you pre-order it, they take the money straight away as well. well it's a lot of those just to make it harder for people to just say pre-order it, play the beta, and cancel yeah. it. Cheers. Yeah, well, plus if it's going to be on it, Game Pass as well, yeah, why would someone it. pay 60 quid or whatever it is to pre-order it to play the beta? Well, I don't get betas and all that stuff. Just play the game when it comes out, man. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, I heard good things about it. Can't wait. Yeah, I mean, I heard yeah. good things about it this week. Apparently, it plays well and looks good and all that jazz. So it's Halo, right? I mean, Halo fans are happy with it. Yeah, that's all that matters. So, yeah, I wish I could have tried it, but you know, I I, I can wait patiently. It's fine. I'm I'm not a big Halo. I mean, I used to like Halo back in the day, but I've kind of. You know, my favourite Halo was like Halo 2 on the OG Xbox. And then, you know, I did enjoy Halo 3 on 9 on the 360. But since then, it's I've kind of died off it, you know. It's a shame, really. No one in the community really got into Master Chief Collection with me. Um, so that was sad. So, yeah, I, I hope this is people. decent. Yeah, but I could never, I never really get on with people, you know, like... It just never seemed to be very popular, Master Master. Oh, well, no, I think that's just going to be the case for every game. It doesn't matter how amazing it is. Even Back for Blood, there's going to be a lot of us that probably jump on it, play it a fair bit, but then it's going to die out. Yeah, it will do. Yeah, 100%. Everything generally does. Yeah. Oh, well. But, yeah, it looks good. So, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, anyone tried the ascent? Yes, we have Clarky, so that's uh, we we answered that earlier. Oh fuck! Did I just get rid of the pricking? Oh fuck's sake! Hang on. I just got rid Click of the wrong it. tab. Yeah, hang on. Sorry, guys. Uh, Nikki, you asked a question in the group. Yeah, well, I didn't know I was on until like two minutes before you hit the call. <laughs> I know. So that's why I ask it in person then. So, right, right, well, basically, Nikki, I'll ask you a question. I was having a discussion slash argument with one of my mates on um, stream. We were talking about indie games, and he was saying that um, Eternal, you know, 70 quid PS4 exclusive is an indie game. I was like, well, no, you, you can't have a full price seventy pound game and then say that's an indie game. I just thought, you know, in my opinion, on how I see, like an indie game is like a cheap, small game, you know, usually digitally only for like for fifteen quid max. But he said, oh well, Sony didn't have any uh, influence on the development; they just paid money towards something and marketing i'm so all right but 
I just thought what you guys thought, you know, what an indie game is or what we what we think an indie game is. So most people would... Ga- Sorry, go on, no, Darren, I'll answer. No, 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 answer. no, no, no. You go, you go or right. jump in. So an indie game, most people do think of as like those small kind of arcade type games, or, you know, those cheap looking, not cheap looking, but, you know, like those kind of pixel art kind of graphic games, right? But... In my mind... Shovel Knight and things like that. Yeah, but actually, if you think about it, Indie is actually just short for independent, right? So it's an independent studio. Um, So an independent studio can charge whatever the hell they want for games, but it's usually an independent studio with a smallish team as well. Mm. Um, But then, like, it gets... um, it does get muddied in the water, right? Because you could say that most studios are independent, really. So I think, yeah. it, like, if you think about it, it could be like a small studio. And I think the guys that made Return at the time were a small studio, but now they have been swallowed up by Sony. Um, but I think at the time they were independent. I don't think it, it was a very small team that made it, to be honest, Nick, Nicky. So. Um, I still think of, yeah. like, Ninja Theory being a kind of indie studio as well. Yeah, and obviously they've now bought out by Microsoft, so they're going to yeah. basically have a bigger budget and more to work with and stuff. But yeah, it it can vary from like big budget indie games, I suppose you could class them as, to sort of like the smaller sort of ten quid style ones, down to like your couple of pounds sort of pick up and plays on things like Steam and yeah. mobile. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah, if you think about it, it's it's just an independent studio. Um, That's what it really means. But, you know, as I say, it can mean people have their own ideas of indie games and that's fine. But I I don't think there's really a set kind of standard, to be honest. That's that's just my take on it. I just thought, you know, because we are basically watching someone else we stream and he was, I can't remember what he was playing, but it was like a 2D sort of Dark Souls hard sort of fighting game and he was saying yeah. oh well that's exactly that was like um ten dollars on steam yeah he said oh well that's exactly the same as a 70 pound like game on ps4 i was like well no you can't really you know, judge them the same way as you know <laughs> as each other and he's oh yeah that's that's technically independent but I, you know i just not I, I haven't liked that many you know what you would call indie games over the years i just oh. think they get a free ride and then you get like the hipsters online <laughs> like 10 out of 10 and you watch a game and that's just a flower floating around for an hour and i'm like hey flowers is really shit? good <laughs> I know, but, yeah. I know, but i'm just saying i know you're saying that, that came out for 70 pounds on ps4 and you went and bought that webby yeah and I'd I'd be be saying, 10 pissed. out of 10 you would be saying 70 quid for a flower floating around fuck off yeah 100%. you would wouldn't you <laughs> But we just hold them to a different, you know, those type of games to a different standard as, you know, the big budget AAA games, if you see what I mean. Whereas that yeah. Returnal, I wouldn't class, you know, I would say independent independent game and you'd get like somewhere between, you know, AAA. I mean, if there's AAA, there's got to be A and AA, right? I know we might be oh, talking yeah, about that. still have and stuff, A's but... and stuff around to a degree. Yeah. I just... Didn't think there's only AAA games and only indie games. You know, there's sort no, of somewhere. They're, they're, I mean, I mean, between. The, I mean, the 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 360 well, era Samuel, was kind Samuel of the king of the double A's. In between, because it's it's not an indie game and it's not a triple A. Yeah, it's but, just a studio that's made a game for a platform that's got a decent budget behind it. But what I will say is, Returnal is no in no way, shape, or form worth seventy quid. I'm just putting it out there now. It's literally, it's not a very big game, which is fucking hard. I don't know how they can justify seventy quid for that game. I do not know. It's ridiculous. Again, uh, it's, it, it depends what you get out of it. There's a lot of people that do really like it, and if they're willing to pay that, that's fine. Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, we, I we sometimes have to look for indie games as well to to kind of break the mold a little bit because. Oh, there's loads before, of the line, man. There's loads a lot of, the, a lot of the AAA games are just big, sprawling, sort of like world exploration yeah. time sinks to a certain degree with third person or first person or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're reasonably similar. Yeah. 
in in the way they function it's the indie games that try and change gameplay up a little bit and do different things mm. sometimes they fail sometimes they succeed yeah agree but yet the big studios aren't willing to take those risks because not it's now a they lot. used to i mean do you still see ubisoft making a lot of daring decisions yes um, with uh, with those they they kind of can because they're still making a decent amount of money back on things like assassin's creed and a yeah, few of the franchises yeah. they have that do really well so they can afford to do that but if you're yeah. a studio that does like one or two a year yeah, or a publisher yeah, yeah, that only yeah. does one or two a year you've got to make sure at least one of those is a hit yeah i mean the there's a lot of companies as i say that, that that don't take risks anymore i mean and that, I think that's a problem. With, I, I, I actually do think there is a big problem in gaming at the moment where in regards to a lot of studios not taking risks. They're just happy to pump out remasters over and over again. And but, instead but, of yeah, well, even with new. the remasters, like, are we really getting a lot of the remasters we kind of want? There are well, still a ton of games out there that are literally almost like a Square Enix in case of emergency break glass. Yeah, I still want. I mean, I still want to try new things, man. You know, I like I, yeah. yeah, I I know what you're saying, but I still think you know there there was a time in gaming, and I'm going back to the 360 era again. Um, I I, I do think that was kind of a golden age for me. And for it's kind of general. a golden age for a lot of things. I mean, just yeah. look at the sheer variety of the types of games you had. Yeah, and that's what I was going to come to. I mean, it well. it felt like back then, not a week went by where there wasn't a new game to fucking play. Uh, oh, I could yeah. easily buy six, seven games a month like yeah. back then sometimes. And 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 a lot of them were, were good quality games as well. Though, and 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 that's and that is a time when studios were trying new things all the time. You know, and it, and and I, and I just feel like the last two gens now, like. I mean, well, PlayStation have kind of brought it back with some of their exclusives so far, but it just feels, I don't know, we're in a bit of a gaming plateau where it's coming to new daring games, really. And and, and, and I do and I do think, like, with uh, indies are some of those people that might save the day, to be honest. I mean, the the, the PC space in particular is, is 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 the most diverse in that regard and there's a lot of variety there. But um on the console I I I would like to see again a, a return to that golden age of new new types of games, daring, you know, just just devs trying to pump out something fresh and new. I mean I'm just fed up with fucking remakes all the fucking time, man. It's just doing my tits in and and I, and I think in regards to I mean I mean I mean <laughs> you there's just about a remake. Yeah, I, I know, but I've never played them, right? So that's fine because they're yeah, super true. old, right? From the eighties, so that's allowed, all right. <laughs> well, I'm talking about remakes from like ten years ago, but you know, each console's got its own issues, right? You got, in my opinion, right. So this is my opinion, right? I might be wrong. You got Sony. Which, you know, they've done all right on the PS5 with some of their exclusives so far this gen, but they've obviously they've had the Demon Souls as a remaster, but their games are too expensive. Right? So that's their issue. Microsoft's issue is Game Pass is amazing. It has a lot of great games, but there's no there isn't any kick ass exclusives out at 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 the moment yet. And and I feel Microsoft really need they really need to try something new because they're relying on like the Gears of Wars, your Halos and your Forzas. I want to see something fresh and new from them. Um and then Nintendo are just kind of like they're in that middle ground, right? I mean they they have their good old classics that they bring out, you know, like your Zelda's and stuff, but but they re- rely a lot on remakes as well, right? So again, there is that plateau Whereas on the PC space, you've got a mixture of everything. You know, you've got your remakes, you've got your indies and everything like that. And I, I just don't, I don't know if it's my age or what, I don't know. It's just, at the moment, I still love gaming, but it's just, I don't know, nothing's really, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not in that golden age. I don't know, I can't, I can't explain that feeling any more than that, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Uh mm. It's, it's, it's odd. I can't really explain it in any other way. I'm struggling to find the words. 
Oh. Yeah, I think it's also that it hasn't helped this this last year or so either. Like ever since these both systems have launched, like they they launched during a pandemic. Yeah, and, it's and still we're very still hard to technically get in the pandemic, and it has slowed down a lot of game production and releases and things like that. Yeah, like you yeah, can guarantee that's why New World's been pushed back. They've probably yeah. found a few things they want to do. They could probably get them down in a couple of weeks, but no, we'd rather take six weeks or whatever, get it out in a better and completed hmm. state, give themselves yeah. a little bit of a breathing room. Yeah. So that hasn't helped either, on, in my opinion. Agreed, mate. Agreed. Right, let me just see if there's anything else. Uh, new so it holding... would be nice to go back to, sorry, just like yeah, random sort of... Things like the darkness and singularity and oh, games of that games. kind of. Yeah. I mean, darkness is quite shocking. I'm surprised we haven't seen another one of them because I think the first one did pretty damn well. A lot of people like that, and then the sequel did really well as well, I think. Um, but then nothing, and they blatantly sequel baited at the end of the second game as well. I want to see uh, like another home front type game. <laughs> I love that game. It's so good. Uh, but then I would also like what, to see Darren White. That people didn't like. No, not that one, but like the first one. But um, Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. But then, but then, like you see all these companies fuck things up as well, right? So you you look at Ubisoft as a great example of just completely destroying the Ghost Recon franchise. Um, chasing trends. The ch- chasing yeah. trends has kind of ruined stuff. Like there's. We saw it with, like, when, when COD hit it big, everything was trying to be COD. Yes, yes. And then Battle Royale became big, and then all these Battle Royales came out, and these free first-person Battle Royale-style games, and you're kind of like, yeah, it looks good, but it's still technically the same thing. Yeah, 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 100%. You know, and I miss, you know, doing, I don't know. And I think, again, now, but... like, where I've gone back many a time and, and talked about game worlds. Yeah. And how, how interesting it is to go and travel around in certain worlds that are created in games. Take something like, say, recent game, uh, Resident Evil 8. Yes. Or Resident Village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the setting of that wasn't like it was, I don't think it would have been anywhere near as good. No, It would have just no, been a standard Resident game. It's, it's the world. Yeah, they 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 made it so so lived in, felt so real. It was really well done. Yeah, we're say. we're missing a lot of really well thought out and developed sort of interesting worlds to explore as well. And yeah. you lose that with obviously the lack of games coming out at the moment, as it were. Just mm-hmm. thinking back to last gen, all of the different sort of worlds and that you went through sci fi and underwater things. Yeah, I like know that. what you mean. Just, I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. You kind of like cause a lot of games are missing that wow factor. Like I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about the Bioshock series, the trilogy, and how much I loved those games. And I'm not asking for a remake or anything like that. Um, but uh, just I thought, uh, I'd be on it like a car bonnet. <laughs> a proper one. Like I even said to my mate, like back in the day, because he he's just picked up a PSVR and he's obviously oh, been nice. enjoying that. Yeah, and. Uh, I sort of said to him, and he was like, "Yeah," because he's got Skyrim in VR. And I said, "What's it like?" What's it like? Oh, it's awful. Like that. And he said, oh, it's, "It's really good in that." And I, oh, said, I didn't like it. And he was like, but you know what? I want some more different kind of games like that. I don't really particularly want remakes as different stuff like that. And I went, "All right, I'm going to give you a, throw it out there." Bioshock in VR, oh, like yeah. with the 3D surround and everything like that. And he was like, "Oh, stop it!" Like. <laughs> That'd be a money maker right there. Money but games, again, man. VR's kind of in limbo at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think don't, we're I mean, waiting for that mm. next tech jump where the it's more responsive with the uh, FPS and stuff, and has a better resolution. It doesn't always feel like you've got like cheese, um, yeah, cheese so. cloth or whatever over your eyes. eyes <laughs> yeah. You're looking at it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, people rave about the new Oculus, the latest one, but I still. I, st- I mean, I've not tried it, so I can't comment. But I don't. I still don't think it'll be up to you know the the tech where I would want it to be. To be honest, I mean, like, if you're literally thinking about the like the full on future of gaming, I think that is still a good way to look. 
Yeah, they, maybe. They, like, even if they haven't picked up now, like in 80 years, 90 years, people are going to yeah, be once we're definitely dead. using that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I mean, I get the old motion sickness with the VR anyway, so that needs to be solved um, for people mm, like me. Yeah, that's but... solved with the the FPS kind of yeah, issues and, and it, or whatever screen. it is, the response I mean, if, time. Yeah, I mean, if they could solve that issue for me and have it like looking like the the clarity of like looking at a four K monitor, then then I would be sold. But it, the tech is just not there yet. So, mm. so, so, so for me, it's a big no no. Uh, I think the tech will will get there in the future. I just think it's going to take. Oh, yeah, a while. we'll guarantee it. Eventually, it'll be like a Geordie LaForge thing. You'll just put over yeah. your eye. Job done. But, 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 but at the moment, it hasn't it hasn't got the games in my opinion. Um, and I don't think enough people have it to make, um, to make making games of like a big viable option. To make AAA hits, really, because they just don't sell enough of the copies to. Yeah, know, which is the thing. You the need to get right. the install base, but yeah. then you need the huge install base to actually make something that's going to actually make a bit of money back yeah. on it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, most, most, most definitely. But, you know, even with the original Oculus that I tried, you know, even with that really horrible resolution and that, I mean, it was super immersive, man, and I did enjoy my short time with it. But again, as I say, it just wasn't up to the snuff that I would expect. So, yeah. Um, Neil Holding, anyway, asks, when are Xbox Series X is going to be readily available? It's been nearly 12 months and I still can't get one. Oh, that and sucks. Nick, and and Nikki replied saying just use a Hotstock app, which, which is an app that I used on my phone to... to um, Get both. Yeah, I will say, like, so, yeah. a lot of people did moan about. Obviously, you had it yourself, where you had to kind of put money down on the system, and you were yes. placed in like a queue. Yes, I'm sure if you stuck with those, you'd probably have one by now. Yeah, if they eventually done, yeah. do get through those. Yeah. Like that may or may not be the best thing. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you yeah. know someone else that's gonna gonna want one or is trying to get older one, it might be worth just saying, "Look, I'll put money down on this." Mm -hmm. That way, if one pops up and you get hold of it, like using your phone or whatever on some random happy yeah. day, that you actually manage to secure one, you've still and you've still got the other one locked in. You've got someone else that's still after one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Weird, yeah, the Series yeah. S's are just like on the shelf at the moment. They, they, yeah, but who so the many fuck of them about. I mean, just I think they've a lot completely of underestimated online. what people want. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Series S. Don't do me wrong. I think it's an okay idea, but really, if you're a proper gamer, you're gonna have a Series X. I want the big black one. That's what I really want. Yeah, it, it's awesome and. Uh, I don't play it, but my missus plays on it every night playing Sea of Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought her that um that that Xbox um wireless headset. Oh what right, the, you know, the one with the green one. bits on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice, man. It's, it's comfy, nice. isn't it? Comfy as anything. Have you got one, Darren? I think you said you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. like the um, dials on, on the side. Yeah, you yeah, on the side for your yeah, volumes and stuff. Yeah, I was a little bit annoyed because I bought one off eBay because it was like 15 quid cheaper, but it didn't fucking work. So I sent it back and uh, was I went it not to. Was charged or did you try charging it? I tried charging it, just kept on turning off. So I went on oh. to. Um, I, went, I, went, I, just, I ended up. The only place I could find one was Game. So I went. I took a little trip to Game and bought one from there and it worked straight away. So yeah, the one I got was a bit of a duffer, which was a little oh. bit annoying. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, I was really impressed with how comfy it is, and it sounds nice. And because I game on Very the PC, on, yeah, because I game on the Sea of Thieves with her up, uh, so I'm upstairs and she's downstairs. Um, you know, and the the quality on the mic's really really good as well. So yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, how much yeah. was yours? It was like ninety quid. Yeah, it's about right. Yeah, I think yeah. it's around ninety. Yeah. So I'm so I'm just checking eBay to see if I've got my freaking refund through, and I don't think I have yet, wankers. When did you send it back? Uh, the other day, uh, a few days ago, he got it back. So I'm hoping. 
It's uh, well, it's yeah. Sunday. It'll probably click over tomorrow or Tuesday. Yeah, refund's not sent. Yeah, it should have the refund by the tenth. So, yeah, that's all right. Cool. Okay. Is there any other questions? Double checking. I just need to double check Twitter. Okay, Arctic Jaeger. Uh, is the last question we've got for this evening. Uh, what game or games got you all into gaming? Who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, probably Sonic. On because I saw my mate had my cousin had like you know the Omega Drive and Sonic the Hedgehog and things like that, and I was like, yeah. I want one of these. And yeah, that's probably about it, really, because I think was like ninety one, ninety two, so I'd have been about six, seven by then. So yeah, yeah Sonic. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Go on, Darren. Oh, for me, it probably would have been um, the early days. I think one of the first games I ever played, apart from obviously Granny's Garden on the uh, <laughs> weird computer at school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, was like just crap like a lot. I suppose Renegade, um, Green Beret, that kind of thing. But when I actually really got into gaming was when I went around my mate's house and played his Master System. Oh, nice! And, and, he, and he had fa- and he, he had Fantasy Zone. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I really liked. I, I thought the music was cool and the the very colourful visuals and the sort of scrolling shooter aspect. And again, like Bubble Bubble. Oh man, yeah, what that game? game was just such a big game in the and the the it was a great game and it was two player as well. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. It was like a winning formula, and obviously, where well, I've got a younger brother. There's sort of games that we can always enjoy playing. Yeah, yeah, nice. Very nice. Um, for me, I mean, I don't. I mean, I. God, I mean, I, I my friends like when I was a kid, my next door neighbours had a Super Nintendo. One of another neighbour had a NES. Another neighbour had a Mega Drive. Um. So I used to uh, play, you know, the Sonics at one friend's house and the Mario's at another friend's house and that. Um, and I and I had an Atari ST, so I have fond memories of playing like a Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge on that and some other games, um, you know. And then obviously I've got my own Mega Drive. Uh, I was a big Sonic kid. Uh, Destruction Derby, FIFA, 95, 96 with the indoor football was great. Um, you know, I, so I've always been a gamer, you know, in the arcades and stuff like that. Always really enjoyed gaming, and then obviously, um, when the PS, when I got my PS One in ninety seven, uh, that's when my gaming addiction became real. Um, you know, I always remember the day that Christmas Day getting uh, the the PlayStation, and I got the demo <laughs> disc. Yeah, you remember the demo disc that came with the PlayStation? Oh, yeah. The dinosaur the, the and that? talking dinosaur, yeah. And the only game that I got was Final Fantasy VII. And I was like, what is this? This looks shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I spent about a month just playing the demo disc, just like, oh, I don't want to play this, this other game. And I thought, well, and I got to a point where I was like, this is the only game I've got, so I'm going to have to play it. And then yeah, was it bundled them. with the system then? Like your Final parents Fantasy randomly VII. got it. Yeah. yeah, my mum bought bought it for me because she said it was a really popular game. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Whoever whoever at the store recommended and did that deal, good on you. Like, yeah. <laughs> ended up yeah. giving you your favourite game of all time. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? So, and that's what I was going to say, because I ended up like thinking, oh, this game looks shit, to it becoming, you know, my favourite game of all time, and without that game, I wouldn't have got into gaming loads, and probably wouldn't have done the poddy. So you know, it's it's, it's a real big deal. So I think that yeah. was everyone's first, like if that was their first Final Fantasy, it was their first impression. It was like, what is this shit? What I've got to read? Man, the graphics yeah, that's shit. It. And then uh, a few hours in, you're like, oh my god, I must play all night. Yeah, because I, I remember say... gone. I was about to say the, the the cultural thing. Even when you think way back then, obviously you had the early consoles, but yeah. it was only really around. 
when the PlayStation came out, Stunties mentioned it before, it became more mainstream. It, it kind of came out of the sort of like nerdy kid in the bedroom or the arcades or stuff, and it, it added itself into nightclubs and sort of yeah, popular yeah, yeah. culture in a way. Yeah, yeah, it did. But I was which just made say, yeah. um, a lot of people focus on games that had been out yes. for years on other systems and then like this was the one that was like popular because there was eyes on the system at the time yeah. that it came out whereas yeah. there wasn't that eye on gaming in general like that back no. with the, the titles yeah so this is why like things like seven is a lot of people's first because yeah. there was a lot of buzz and stuff about it everyone buys the playstation magazines or the different c and vg and that and they're like what's this game here this looks epic like big yeah, long because, right because all the adverts are all the cutscenes <laughs> as well you yeah. know it's just like wow this looks amazing but yeah as i say with final myself i remember at school um talking to people about the game and like I don't think the game was very popular, like with my, it wasn't very popular with anyone at my school at the time because I remember talking about it and people were like, oh, the the characters, the graphics and the characters look really shit. <laughs> That's the thing I always remember people saying, oh, they look really crap and blocky. I was like, oh, it's so good, you know. So, yeah, it's just. I mean, we're also going back to the early days of like great marketing. There was. Plenty of games sold, uh, especially in the import scene from like Japan or America. Not so ne- necessarily so much here. I don't yeah. know if we did it as much in Europe, where obviously a game would come out, and like one of the big hypes behind that game coming out is it's bundled with a demo disc for a certain really anticipated game, because obviously yes. they couldn't deliver to you the actual um, demos through the internet and everything like you yeah, get nowadays. Yeah, like you'd actually have certain huge games like there was final fantasy 7 was a demo disc bundled in with a game um metal gear solid 2 was another huge demo disc bundled in with another game and there's like quite a few like like that yeah and yeah i do do remember i remember buying a game i remember buying a game for the final fantasy 10 demo and i can't remember what game it was now i've still it was square fantasy 6 a lot I'm like in Brave Defense and Mishashi. I think that came bundled with a game as well. Right. I think the Final Fantasy X demo came with Final Fantasy VI on PS1, maybe. Oh, maybe, yeah, because I've got a copy of VI. Yeah, so it's probably in, 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 in that box, yeah. yeah. So I was used to, like, I remember the Final Fantasy VII adverts. Well, I don't remember them, you know, see them on YouTube, and they yeah. only showed, like, the FMVs. Yeah, yeah. Imagine said, the yeah, people yeah, yeah. Who, who saw that, and then they played it and I watched all that block you said like, what is this yeah but it's but, quite interesting because obviously after very recently playing the original 7 again for like the millionth time and then going on to 7 remake I mean they really do such a good job of reimagining the opening intro sequence it, it, it gives you goosebumps man because it's like they, they've paid so much attention to detail to to how they've redone it with, with the new um Engine, it's just brilliant, man. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Love it. Cool. Um, is there? There's no other questions. So, have you guys got anything to say before we end? Uh, not particularly. We've been running for just over two hours. Boom, boom. Aren't we cool? Awesome. So before we end, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone for listening live on Twitch and watching my ugly mug. I know it's a face made for radio, but there we go. Um, So I've been thinking a little bit this week, right? So I've been listening to, because I've been moving house and unpacking boxes, I've been listening to the Distant Worlds soundtracks, uh, which is the soundtracks to Final Fantasy VII all week, or well, to the Final Fantasy games in general. And uh, I've been thinking, you know what? We really need to do another music special podcast. And I was looking back, and the, and the only one time we did it was actually when the show had changed its name to Mojo Radio, and we did the music special in 2014. Um, and I've actually lost that episode because I deleted all the mojos, so we have no mojo episodes. Oh. Yeah, so uh, if anyone has a has has the mojos. I'm, oh, I will pay you money to fucking get them to me. Um, 
it was when I was in one of those modes where I just was fucking done and I just deleted them all um, off the server. Literally lost your mojos. Yes, but I do have all the original 360 gamer class, so that's okay. And I'm and I, and every week when I record the show, I back I back the episodes up onto um, a cloud hosting service as well, so I won't make make the same mistake again. Uh, but I have none of the mojo, so I don't have a music episode because because today I was thinking, oh, I'd like to listen back to that just to get a bit of inspiration. And I was like, oh fuck, I don't have it. I can't get hold of it. So if anyone does have it, please. Please send it to me and and then the other mojos or whatever. But um, I might have it knocking around somewhere. To be honest, I think amazing. I kept hold of it because it was a great episode. It was amazing. So anyway, I I, I would like to do another one. I'm not sure when we're going. I want to do it in the next. Well, I would like to do it this month if possible. So if you're around, Darren, awesome, Nikki, you're you're very welcome. Um, yeah, uh, and I think you know. We can just go through like last Hopefully time. Hopefully, we can get Stunty on because he shut out last time and he was really no, gutted, uh, wasn't he? Sunday yeah. before the bank holiday Monday, so then it doesn't matter how long. Yeah. Gone for. Oh, I'll try and so, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at my schedule because obviously I work shifts, so um, I need yeah, to so see. I think but... I'm working that Sunday night, to be honest. Okay, well, you know, we'll. I mean, this. I mean, it. it we'll organise it for when we're all available. Anyway, we'll try and uh, get it done soonish uh but i think it'll be a good one because i i have fond memories of doing that last show and you know video game music is is a, is a huge part of, of video gaming right so i think i think doing another show like that would be amazeballs so um i need to look into the intricacies of copyrights because i know i can release the the episode onto patreon because it only goes onto that feed but because the show now goes on to Spotify, they are really strict with copyright, and I don't want to lose the show uh, going on to Spotify, so I might that's not. That's kind of random, because it's yeah. supposed to be like, you can't profit off of other people's work, kind of a thing, the yeah. reason for copyright and whatnot, and yeah. it's like, oh, it's fine if it goes onto the Patreon thing, because they're paying me. Yeah, I'll stick it on the free for the free people. I'm going to get hit by copyright. Yeah, because it doesn't go on Spotify. Yeah, because it doesn't go on to Spotify, right? So you put it on the website. You just put it on there, and then download links. Like I just, I just won't be able to put it on the main feed. I don't think so. I because when I signed up to get it, um, the the podcast feed put up on Spotify, they have a really like like a warning comes up like with the really strict. It is kind of weird because i know yeah. a lot of people on youtube do music playlists and stuff on there it, it just generally means that the the, the video is demonetized yes 100 percent on, on youtube uh, so fine. you just don't make any money on it yeah but on spotify the it's all saying, i need to double check with uh with the main feed on spotify before i look it's not know. like it's entire playlist usually they're just like a yeah. single track we've yeah. chosen from a certain game yeah i need to double check that's, that's all I'm saying. I just want to double check. That's all. Um, uh, yeah. So so we've got that. I want to do, and obviously, want to. I need to do the conspiracy theory episode at some you point. I haven't done it. Oh, mate, I've been busy, mate. I've been moving out. And then obviously, I need to do another Patreon show with some of the patrons, um, which they do not seem to be very forthcoming with wanting to lend their voices. So um, we will see if that happens in the future. But 100% the music one is going to happen soon and the conspiracy one as well. So look forward to those two episodes in the near future. On that note, I think we should end it here, everybody. It's been amazing. It's been emotional. So from me, Mark Webb, Gamertag, PSMD, Steam ID, Webby, 360G. Yeah, it's a Nick fight. Uh, Nick fights on Twitch, and uh, yeah, if any of you like like um, cheap little indie games, put them on the Facebook group, and I'll have a look at them. I I know a good one. It's called Returnal. That's up, you tart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sensei Switch. So thank you very much. If you would like to subscribe to the Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash three sixty gamercast. From as little as £5 a month, you will get an episode every single week of the year, plus all the special episodes that we do. The links for the Discord, group, Twitter, Facebook and all that, just visit 360gamercast.com 
all the links are there for you. My recommendation, join the Discord. It is the most popular place for the community to talk and arrange game nights and stuff now. So join the Discord. It's an awesome place to be. On that note, thank you very much for listening. I hope to see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.